Good morning and welcome to week 17 of the Five Pin Universe Pro League. Um, we are covering the Schwartz Home Hardware Division today and our commentators are myself. We have Larissa Long whoop, on that side of me. We've got, <laughs> nope, again the wrong side, Steve Barker down on the corner and Brandon Naughton who is also running the streams today. How are we all doing? We're good. Doing good. good. Awesome. Everyone is adjusted to their own times. You know, Steve, it's probably a little later for you. Yeah, it's 11 a.m. here, so so we're good. Yeah, Brandon, you're an hour behind, up even earlier than any of us. Yes, <laughs> enjoying the caffeine. Um, so if you didn't see by our, our cover or thumbnail today, we've got a big lineup. So our first match is uh, GP Holy Rollers versus Quebec Lumberjacks. Then we've got Toppler Roses playing three games. First one against the Average Pros, then against the Trash Pandas, and then against the Rock and Rollers. How are you guys feeling about today? Oh, it's a huge day. It's exciting. Um, mm -hmm. I know I'm, as a fan, I'm looking with interest. As a manager, I'm looking with interest. <laughs> um, but huge implications for some of the teams, right? Absolutely. Um, for, we'll go into greater depth as the first game gets going, but um the Roses have three games today. They're in good shape with 42 and a half points, but uh, looking to climb the standings again with their last three games all today. Um, the Holy Rollers had a big win last week that's really helped them, and their last game of the season is the next game coming up. It's a big game for them. A um, couple of teams pretty much just playing for pride, playing out the string with um, the average pros later on and the Lumberjacks' first game, but... Um, yeah, so big games. So Trash Pandas, one game this week and two more next week. So mm -hmm. yeah. getting down to those last, you know, one, two, three games for all the teams here. So numbers are really starting to materialize. Yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, let's bring in our team captains slash managers. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Uh, just before we're not there, Scott. Uh, Sly, how are you guys feeling this morning at the back? Uh, we're doing good. Everyone's doing good. We're uh, we're looking forward for that match for sure. Absolutely. Any thoughts going into today? Obviously, the points not very much in your favor, but still, still a reason to play. Yeah, for us, like it's just trying to. Uh, do our best today. See what what's going to come out of this. I know the older rollers are fighting for uh, for play, playoff spots. So uh, for for them, it's a critical match, and uh, I'm pretty sure they'll show up and so they'll fire fire up the lanes today for sure. Totally. Scott, obviously a huge win last week for you guys um, in a close game over the average pros. It could, um, could have gone either way through seven frames. You guys really pulled it out. Um, any change in mindset today going into your last game, uh, looking at numbers or just, uh, just trying well, to I think, uh, yeah, the mindset's still the same. We're just going to go out there and chuck it. Um, you know, we, we said last week, you know, we look at it, Hey, we need, we got two games left. Let's take 12. Um, obviously we got the bonus one last week with uh seven one. Um, we just need to do what we got to do best and yeah, leave it out in the lanes. You know, we're, in a little bit different position than we were in the last couple seasons. So uh, it's a, you know, we just got to battle through the adversity. So, yeah. How are you guys dealing? Obviously you're hosting the Alberta open uh, in two weeks. Uh, how have you guys navigated trying to keep your minds off of that and focus on today? Pretty simple for me. I didn't make a team. So I just, uh, I'm just here to party, but um, I think, you know, for the guys that are, in the open, I don't think that changes anything. Um, you know, we all bowl league. We all 
World Pro League. So I don't think that changes anyone's mindset. You know, it. Yeah, it's a little bit added pressure when you're actually hosting in your own city or in your home lane. So that that, you know, that adds to it. But I don't think that takes that takes away from the mental. For sure. Um, let's go over lineups. I don't know who the away team is. Uh, we are not there. So okay. we don't have uh, – Steven's not here. He's pretending to bowl down in uh, Red Deer for Masters. Uh, and Danny's not available with us either. Uh, um, so we have uh, leading off Robert, uh, then Corey, then Tom, Megan in the four bowl, uh, Rylan in the five bowl, and myself and Sean on the bench. Awesome. And Sly. So on our end, Maxim and Karen won't be there. So we got Fred on the top spot, Isabel, Chantal, myself, and uh, Matt Leonard in the anchor spot. Perfect. And on your bench today? Uh, Jean-François Donny. Yeah, sorry. Perfect. I forgot about him. That's okay. <laughs> All right. We will let you guys go and warm up. And we are going to hop into uh, your guys' rosters, and then we'll get to playing. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Right. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, well. All right, Larissa, can you read us out? Yeah, for our Holy Rollers, we have Scott Hauka, Sean Tompkins, Thomas Tompkins, Robert Tompkins, Corey Pijou, Donnie Stewart, Megan Clark, Rylan Willier, and their manager who's not there today, Steve Petrovich, and they're from HG's Bowling Center in Grand Prairie. Amazing. Brandon, would you mind going over uh, Quebec for us if you're not too busy? Oh, sorry, Brandon, you're just a little She's quiet. Crazy. I'm not sure. If you... <laughs> We're still a little quiet there, Brandon. I'm going to let you work on the mic. Steve, do you just want to read it out? Yeah. yeah. The Quebec Lumberjacks are Sly Bercier, Max Lafreniere, Matt Leonard, Fred Martin, J.F. Denis, Isabel Sonia, Chantal Sear, Karen Villeneuve, bowling out of Salle de Cue de Nis in Gatineau, Quebec, managed by Gilles LeBlanc, and I think Sly is running the show today. He is. Perfect. Okay. Well, without further ado, let's pull up their stream and get things going. So teams, whenever you're ready, you are good to throw your first ball. While they're getting ready for the first, oh, it looks like we've already, Robert is ready to go. He is up there. <laughs> All right, that better? Fred that is much it. better. Yeah, for some reason it switched off with my headset mic. That's all right. What do we got there? Ooh, a corner. Is like a tap? I think so. I feel like we don't see that a whole lot at, a, at Grand Prairie, the corners. You know, lots of head pins and lots of strikes. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, well, we're there getting started there. As Steve alluded to, we're going to get into more detail about the standing since it is such an important yeah. day. Steve, Cheers. run us through the situation. What's happening? Yep. So next gen, obviously Tyler's team. You guys have 66 points. I think you only lost one game all year. And I think that was like 1354 to 1345 <laughs> or something like that. That sounds so, familiar. Yeah. That, that's, that's pretty incredible. That might have been to the Rock and Rollers too. But the yep. Rock and Rollers, um, who we see the last game today, they have 49 and a half points with a max of 57 and a half. Um, the Venom have 50 and a half they are done so they're one of the teams that uh, the rest of us are chasing down um the holy rollers again a huge win last week to get to 43 points um so they're looking for another win today they can actually pass the venom if they take all eight um topplers got three games today 42 and a half as i mentioned they would have to take all 24 to pass uh, next gen that's a very very tall order to win 15 out of 15 matches but we've seen stranger things happen but again they just want a good day too to to solidify themselves a spot um, um the mayhem we've got two games next week against the snowman and the trash pandas um the lumberjacks again playing out the string today but um you know they're they're such a strong team. They just haven't gotten it together in this league. Mm -hmm. um, and they had all their games in like the first half of the season too, right? 
yeah which which can work yeah. work either way um but with all their national experience and that and all their pride we know they're going to bring it today um again the snowmen have two games next week left the trash pandas a game today against the roses and then two games against the mayhem and minto next week um and then minto's kind of run out of run out of room they've had not had a bad season the way they played but again the league is just so strong and then the average okay. pros have played a lot better lately, more like they played last year, at the end of last year. But they've got one game left against the Roses today. Totally. Yeah, so we're looking to Quebec to uh, uh, play spoiler a little bit in this match here. We'll mm -hmm. see how that shakes out. Yeah, I didn't want to bring up that word, but... Uh... <laughs> it's in everyone's mind. Yeah. Yeah. So solid, some solid marks across the board here. Both teams, first frame. Yeah, it looks pretty even from the start there. Yeah, one little hiccup with Robert not picking up that spare, but with the amount of strikes that he throws, uh, I wouldn't be concerned. And he's had a lot of games this year where he's kind of, you know, chipped away halfway through the game and then just up huge at the end. Yeah. He's actually filled a lot this year. Well, not a lot, but at least a few games he's come off the bench. But... Um... I think they need him in there. He's uh, he he just brings a whole new dynamic to their roster when he's in the lineup. Such such a solid leadoff. Not to mention uh, runner up at Autumn Open this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super mm -hmm. strong performance there. Yeah, and we saw it. We saw it at the Autumn Open. Just so many finishes coming down to the tenth, where he just clutched up huge. Yeah. Fred's putting the pressure on early, though. He says, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to throw strikes. <laughs> yeah. Looks like we may be... Kind of interesting. Last week, the Holy Rollers had Ryland third and Tom on the bottom, and this week, they've swapped them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never... You never know what's going on in their weekly leagues, right? Someone maybe not feeling it today. Yeah. yeah. Chantal, ready to follow up the string of strikes that Quebec is putting up there at four in a row. Sorry, five in a row as a team. Okay, am I the only one noticing that their score camera seems to be shaking itself out yeah, of focus? It, yeah, it did, yeah. Okay, I'm not, sure. I'm not going crazy then. We're good. <laughs> no. Here. Huh. A little fast, I think, with that one. She's just outside. Steve, as our, as our resident Pro League manager... Um, yeah. What would you say to the Quebec team? Because we've heard all last season and all this season how strong of a team they are, but they just can't seem to convert in the moment. What what would you be talking them through and, and working with? Um, see, they've had... The thing is, they've had great success bowling together on, like, the in provincial... Well, their provincial qualifying is all at once, so not yeah. they don't have to qualify as a team out of provincials, but... You know, nationally, we saw what the men's team did last year, and they've got a few of those guys. And so they all, it's such a tight knit group because the bowling in Quebec is only Gatineau, basically, right? So they all bowl together, they all play together. So um, it's really hard. It's really hard to figure because they've had success as a core group playing in other events and just haven't put it together here. Mm -hmm. um, now, some of it, sometimes it does come down to center just as far as you know we hate to bring it up but it's part of the league you play in the center you play in i don't think they're denis i don't think would be considered a high scoring center so yeah we maybe, have heard that sometimes they're playing at a slight disadvantage but with the the amount of talent they have i think um you know and it's not easy i mean i've got some tough decisions coming up for next week when you've got a <laughs> roster of eight people and you can only play five at a time um you really need a good team dynamic where people are willing to do whatever it takes to to succeed as a unit yeah, absolutely that's oh, looking a lot better brandon thanks for for getting on that thank you so i probably didn't answer your question but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know pretty much Put your put your egos at the door today. We got to come out and do whatever it takes. Totally. Well, Rissa, as our Alberta expert, what are you looking for out of that GB team? You know, you've seen a lot of them at Masters and previous Opens. What are their strengths? What do they need to work on? 
Um, I don't know. I think just being a unit, um, which, I mean, we kind of seen last year with the Grand Prairie men's team, for sure, right? Everybody came out and kind of threw everybody off, and that was kind of exciting. So I think um, with the addition of the two really strong ladies um, for the Holy Rollers here, um, they should be able to be a, one good unit. Um, they bowl with each other too, right? Grand Prairie so out of the way that mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that they all bowl league together probably. So they're probably in the sa- same situation as like the Lumberjacks are, right? They they have really no choice to be but a really good team, right? Totally. Yeah. Just really reiterating that fact that in these team environments, playing as a unit and, you know, covering each other, it's not just about you. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and I think, you know, speaking from our experiences, like having a coach that you trust wholeheartedly makes such a different in an environment where there's pulls, right? For None sure. of us want to get pulled, but we know when it should happen. And having a coach that makes that confident pull and explains to you, this is why I'm doing it and it's going to work, yeah. just mm-hmm. helps that person come off the bench with so much more trust because they're going up there thinking, I have to do this, I have to do this, I need to get yeah. everything if I want to win this match. And our job as teammates and as coaches is to sit there and support them and not tell them, okay, yeah. we need this shot, right? We're there to support them and say, you can do this. We believe in you. You're going to get this strike. And the second part of what you said there, Ty, is so vital, the communication part as mm-hmm. to, and not so much at the like high, high elite level, but I know um, I'm coaching another ladies team coming up in two weeks and we've got a couple that are a little less experienced in I should I say that even with our mayhem team, I explain all the moves and what I'm thinking. But I think yeah. it, as you said, it helps to um, have a coach you can trust. Where when you're there to bowl, all you have to do is worry about bowling. Yeah. Where you're not okay. second guessing everything. Oh, what's he doing? What What are they thinking? Well, haven't they? You know. Yeah. If you you. It's much easier when you can go there and just worry about your own your own game and support your teammates. Totally. Yeah. So Quebec came out today and said, oh, you want to see a good team? You want to see the team you've been talking about? <laughs> right. This is that team. They have missed the middle once as a team in uh, three frames here. GP maybe just faltering a little bit. Not sure if they looked at the score or not and said, wait a second. Um, Oh, other than, other than Corey, you know, he's really missing though. It's just, uh, yeah, whether it's just early on squeezing in a touch or, but yeah. we've seen them, seen them have huge, huge comebacks and they can mm-hmm. get on a roll. Oh, totally. Those Tomkin brothers, they throw strike after strike after strike after strike. There's no doubt that it's, it's just waiting until it happens. Not if, but a when question. Yeah. yeah. And like last year, the game they the game they played us, they had nine thirty four in the fifth frame. That's insane. It was like just it, and we were on pace for for thirteen and a half, fourteen hundred, and and we're down <laughs> two fifty in the fifth frame. We got it to about to about a hundred, but um, when they get rolling, they get rolling. So you, you when you're on top of them, you got to keep your foot on the uh, yeah. Well, and an early move. Oh. And that's what we talked about, though, right? It's make that move when you feel it. Don't sit there and question it. Trust your gut. Allow the team to trust you and settle into that groove quickly. Yeah. And especially when the other team's rolling, um, you can't you can't wait too long to. Yeah. Right. And if Megan's not feeling it and she's bowling against Sly, and you've got someone as good as Sean on the bench, you really can't uh, you can't wait around. That's nothing against Megan. That's just that's just the way it is. <laughs> We've seen Sly dominate WCBT events. We've seen Sly dominate national events, um, and Megan's been incredibly successful at the provincial level, yeah. making yeah. single step ladders all the time. She's a consistent uh, singles representative out of the north. She's yeah. just not throwing that ball right now. Yeah, because yeah, I think she led their she led their zone in qualifying with about forty nine hundred or something this year. So. She did, yeah. She won the the Ladies North, which uh, mm-hmm. 
you know, for people who know the history of Alberta is quite an upset, uh, upset to Bonnie Olson, who's been the, the North, like, I don't even have a word for it, but she's just, she's yeah. owned the North for years. Yeah. Um, so it's exciting, you know, in Alberta, we definitely have this shift of the paradigm or changing of the guards where it's not just, you know, a three team tournament at open provincials. It's a five team yeah. tournament. Again, we have, there's no relaxation game. No. Yeah. Uh, so totals, we have 272 for Holy Rollers um, with a strike and a spare. And Quebec is sitting at 271 with two doubles, a strike and a spare. And we're going to stop one of those doubles right there, just as Robert is picking up the pace. Yeah, and that's how quick the game can change, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great equalizer. Yeah. As much as I hate to say it as a BC resident, I'm definitely going to be a bit more intrigued by the uh, Alberta Provincials this year. <laughs> Brenna, is your your provincials are the same like Easter weekend? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think that's when most provinces. Obviously, Newfoundland being the outlier. Oh, I was incorrect. Thank you, Jessica. So it's actually Megan's second zone win over Bonnie. So she's trying to make it a habit. <laughs> Corey back on the the middle with that frame. Thomas looks like he's just lost it just a smidge there. I will say there is going to be some excitement with the BC Provincials, though, in terms of the uh, singles event, because we do have Derek Orn out here now. Right. Yeah. And I believe Riley Laton. I'm going to butcher his last name again, Latondre, um, mm -hmm. is also in singles this year. So see yeah, if the boy can uh, pull it through. Totally BC North making a big push. You know, they have Maddie Richter, the Latondras, you know, uh, Dawson Creek and Fort St. John have, have put a lot of work in, similar to Grand Prairie um, over the last few years. Mm. Looks like Quebec's getting maybe just a little bit tight after that huge start. I think they'll be looking for that commercial break to give them a, a breather. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes the rollers really, are putting but, up some marks, though. Yeah, totally. Well, and as you would know, Ty, for the most part, if your punches sometimes because you threw a terrible shot, sometimes you throw it really well with your hand, and it just ends up right on the nose. As uh, yeah, someone who throws a lot of head pins in his game, I am <laughs> quite familiar with both the good ball head pin and the really really bad ball head pin. <laughs> right corner for Ryan, I. It looked like that wrapped around pretty good. Didn't take it with it, but good stuff. I think he was, yeah, I think he was expecting the pull as well there. <laughs> well, and, and there, if you don't get a pull, you've always got a chance at the, uh, the old kick from behind, too. Always, yeah. Ooh, I was actually up there. Night. Oh. Rylan is not on it with his corners today. Oh, sometimes he gets just a little fast. You know, he tries... And he, he, he's a great shooter, and we've seen his spare game improve. So he tries to really play that confidence, and sometimes it's just a smidge too fast. Good cover there by Sly. <laughs> oh, a little mascot there. <laughs> so just hopping into the other stream here to give our viewers an update if you don't have two screens. We have Pin Sanity playing the Pin Slayers. And... Pin Sanity at a PEI has 416 after four frames uh, with a strike working at 420 with two spares and a strike. That's like the biggest extremes you can have. You have Vancouver Island playing Prince Edward Island. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doesn't get the... That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. That's like, that was the whole point of Pro League, right? Is being able to get everybody out from coast to coast and it's good to see yeah. well it it shocks me with how well the rock and rollers have been doing this season i think they did really well last season as well that we don't see more of their players coming out for events like i get it's a huge financial undertaking but yeah yeah and you know especially when they have the nbt that's put in so much work to bring those events to them 
uh, it, it really counter counters that financial burden. So they, for them, they might as well play their own events and That's put fair. the work in out there. And then they come to the nationals and they, they dominate again. We've seen the Newfoundland ladies win a number of events over the last five, 10 years. Yeah. And their mixed team was right in it up until the last game of qualifying at open nationals last year. Yeah. Robert has found it. Sorry to interrupt today. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. good back for Fred there. Mm -hmm. So going into that frame, the Holy Rollers were probably hoping that uh, Fred and Matt would break off their, their triples and both of them yeah. broke off opens. And then Matt especially losing the count on his double. Huge. So, yeah, huge. just a huge turnaround there potentially. Yeah, team totals now still within reach instead of getting slipperier and slipperier for GP. What was that? Uh, that looks like an oops. Oh. Was a big oops. Yep, that's a two pin. Oops. Um, so the nice. the uh, Marcel the monkey is their mascot, which I love. Ooh. Corey's just, you know, struggling this frame. Found the middle and got a little too excited about it. And then now that they've pulled Megan, she knows she's in for the rest of the match too. Yeah. Yes. Which I it was the right call at the time, right? You know. Yeah, you have to. Kind of a crapshoot in the scenarios. You never know. Like some anybody can turn it around and light it up, or anybody can just get that little bit of extra pressure in their mind and grip yeah. the ball a little too much. Chantel's looking to restart her string of marks here. Oh, oh. some matching head pins. Head pin. Oh. This will forever be something that I tease the Tonkin boys about, but uh, I know the usual adage from coaches is hey, make sure you're not dropping your shoulder. And it seems like <laughs> the Tonkin boys uh, chose some selective hearing and uh, dropped their shoulder every shot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. They all kind of file where they start out middle and then drift right. So they really, that's their only option to get it back to the middle. But again, the key is uh, being able to repeat it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at guys like, uh, well, Matt Phillip, for example, I hate to, you know, be BC bias and all, but whenever I think of unorthodox styles, that's immediately where my mind goes. Yeah. Totally. Both teams kind of limping into the break here. Yeah, I think we're all ready for a, a commercial split. <laughs> yeah. Which says, get me out everybody of up with. <laughs> I will, I will. Smoothly and in one great transition. The Lumberjacks sure bumped... board does not include their total, or does not include their their marks and counts on right. totals, I think, so... Right now they're at 595 heading into match shot. Totally. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, Cubica, you have to select it to add in the, the marks there. Mm -hmm. And they probably just didn't set it up that way. Yeah. So 610 oh. heading into the break for. Oh, yeah, he got one. Is that a late fall? Yep, he finally got one. Cool. Awesome. And while we're on the commercial break, we will try and get Lumberjack's camera centered again they're getting a little fired up fred if we can just wait we're gonna get going with uh, the commercial yeah. break here yeah. and we will be back in just a moment
Cargill is proud to be supporting a truly Canadian sport like five-pin bowling. We look forward to watching some great competition from many competitors and bowling centres across our country. With hundreds of locations across Canada, Cargill is committed to helping the Canadian farmer thrive. Whether it is selling commodities, getting agronomic advice, fertilizer needs, crop protection, and marketing expertise, Cargill is here to help. So please enjoy this bowling. Thank you. When you come to the Canadian Brew House, you'll feel right at home. We work hard to make our house your house. With an affordable menu of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and killer deals on daily specials. At our house, you never miss a play. As sports lovers, we've ensured each location includes over 50 TVs and our signature Jumbotron. The Canadian Brew House is the place people want to be. We are back and ready to go. Yep. So big second half coming up. Obviously, uh, just over 100 sticks in front for the Lumberjacks right now. I think the Holy Rollers have to look at this like, look, we've got off to a pretty bad start other than Robert up top, but they have not run away from us. So look at that as a bonus. Totally. They're, uh, yeah, and I wonder if they're looking for that second pull, um, you know, if they had a chat over the commercial break and said, hey, you know, um, you got one shot, and if not, we're going to make a change here. Mm -hmm. And hopefully Robert can kind of keep the, keep it alive, right? Keep that energy up for everybody. Keep it hot. Totally. That's the, the tough job of the lead in a scenario like this. Mm -hmm. So Fred up there quick, and he has been up there quick every frame. So Tyler, you obviously you can play anywhere in the lineup, but you play a lot of lead off. Do you mm -hmm. like being up there quick to get the jump on people? Um, I know it looks on, it works both ways because Robert make, is a good lead off because he throws a ton of strikes, but he's very deliberate, and oftentimes the yeah. other person's up ahead of him. You know, it's a balancing game, and it's whatever works best to that player. For me personally, I like to take my time once I'm on the lane um but I would say in like a 10th frame scenario I'm definitely going to throw first if I have the choice um because why wouldn't I want them to have to stare at a strike you know I have the confidence in myself to go up there and throw a strike and I'm sure Fred does the same and then it's in my hands instead of being in someone else's hands and that's what I would mm -hmm. rather the situation be oh did that one go I don't know. I don't know. I will get on that. They're saying it went. Um, I can pull up. pull up the YouTube stream if you want. Yeah. Replay, replay. Maybe just a, a quick little review. I was talking and I distracted myself. <laughs> I'm sure it did, but. Yeah, I don't. Um, and again, my, my 55 year old eyes and my $3 <laughs> reading glasses don't see everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that looks like that commercial break helped out the lumberjacks a little bit. Yeah, it went. It did. Yeah, it did go. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, in the lumberjacks' favor here. And again, they're in a dangerous position too, right? Because they're just playing spoiler. They've got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. They're just they're flying. Oh yeah, totally. Fred, step to the right, please. Thank you. <laughs> it's like he heard you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting back to the the conversation with lead off and going first and whatever. I know some people are heavy into get up there first, get up there first, but Ooh, yeah, the last thing you ever want to do is take yourself out of your own routine by rushing. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, I, as a player, I've always, if I knew someone was doing that on purpose or whatever, I would 
kind of let them, but I would try and rush them into doing it. Because mm -hmm. essentially yeah. it comes down to what you do on the lanes, right? If they're up ahead of you every time and punching or missing, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. It just comes down to performance. Yeah. Sean got absolutely roasted on that shot, I would like to say. I thought that was a bomb. <laughs> yeah. Lumberjacks, big five marks, mm -hmm. two doubles. Big That's one better for Rylan. No yeah, doubt that's for the Ryan. shot he wants to throw. And you mentioned we talked a little bit about Ryland's pinning or whatever, and obviously you played with him a lot mm -hmm. with the uh, next gen last year and such, but I always find it amazing for such a long approach because he actually starts with one foot off the lane unless there's a huge step up, I think, mm -hmm. how he can be so Even consistent then. with it, but but it is amazing to watch. Yeah, he's just a big, strong guy, right? And and he needs that much room. Great well shot, done, Fred. I, I still can't believe yeah, your uh, your brother's shoe set up there, Tyler. I I would not have a knee if I ran Brad's shoe. Yeah, he plays like the least amount of slide that you can play. Really? Yeah, like the two slider and the most aggressive <laughs> heel. It's it's a bit shocking to me. <laughs> I, I was talking with him at Red Deer last last season about it, and he even mentioned that sometimes he'll take the H2 heel and flip it around so that the teeth dig into the approach. Yes, okay. yes. That's a lot better from Corey. Hopefully she can bring that into the end of the game here. And you know, she's not out of that match with Iza, you know, especially with Iza not, opening. No. I'm, yeah. I'm a little shocked there hasn't been a, a pull yet with that one. I honestly wasn't necessarily paying attention to that match, but one of those scenarios where just giving that player a, a chance to go in already ahead, they really could have put some distance between them. Yeah. Tommy's getting yeah. fired up now. Yeah. That's where it's tough because her good shots are really good. Yeah. yeah. Right? And she really has three strikes in a corner spare. It's just a couple that she's missed. Yeah. GP trying to answer back with that five mark frame. Totals now 698 all added in for GP, 680 not added in on the Quebec side. Another tap for Sean. That's, wow, good shot. Well, that was a strong side. ball. Yeah. Yeah, she loved that. It's really interesting. I actually played on the set that GP is on two weeks ago um, when I was up in Grand Prairie visiting my partner. And I didn't think the breaks were that bad. I'm a little surprised by how many corners we've seen already from them. Yeah, especially I think the only kick they've had too is uh, Ryan and getting a ball count. Yeah. Whereas oftentimes they've we've seen there where you know head those pins, pins like to bounce. Head, head pins turn yeah. into chops and chops turn into strikes and yeah, they yeah, very they similar like to, to bounce around here. I know sometimes just the weather can affect it. There's so many factors that pinfall will go from being immaculate one day to just totally dead. Yeah. And like we mentioned, they are hosting the open in a week and a half here. So they may be mm -hmm. experimenting with their lane conditioning to make sure that it's ready for an event. Uh, we don't know that, but slide just a little off this frame, yeah. trying to place it. Push the first one. And I think just where being on the being on the strike, not wanting to lose the count, I think just over adjusted a bit the second one. Totally. Strong, strong frame from GP. Really looking to put the pressure on, knowing that total is close. You know, a few of their individual yeah. matches may be yeah. lacking here, but they're not not giving up the fight. They are for sure coming back with a lot of aggression here, lots of confidence knowing that this is where they're strongest. Yeah. Yep. And again, they're coming in with 43 points. Um, the Roses have 42 and a half with two games in hand coming in behind them. They have three games left. Mm -hmm. The Venom already in the books of 50 and a half. The Rock and Rollers 49 and a half with a game to go. So, right. yeah. yeah. So every, every point is huge for, for the Holy Rollers. Remind me again, is it top four that make it to playoffs? Top five. five. 
top five. And I think, and Ty, you can speak of this, I think all teams being number one probably helps a little bit, but obviously top three and avoiding the one game plan yeah. is probably just, a huge, a huge factor. Uh, one extra risk you know in our game anybody can beat anybody on any given day mm -hmm. and so if you can take out one round why not aim for it push for that top three give yourself just one a little bit better chance fred oh you could see it just as he let it go <sighs> unhappy huge, unhappy huge shot here for robert yeah Total for the match and he has no idea yeah. Alligator clap. There it is. He's locked in. He's at six. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we said, you know, a little stumble in the first frame, not picking a spare, and then away he went. That is someone for the entire province of Alberta to look out for in singles. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a single? I believe so. Yeah, that'll be. Robert just gets into that zone. Yeah, he just he, he, it's like he enters a different plane of existence. <laughs> Corey, again, I think she's just a little fast and it's it's throwing her timing off. She's having to bring her shoulder around to get that ball back. Yeah, just a little ahead of herself. Yeah. Is that here okay. looking to make? Oh. oh, I thought I was like you, Larissa. I thought that was good. Yeah, I was like, that looked really well. Yeah. And she probably feels the same, right? She's like, oh, yeah, good <laughs> shot. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> they must be contemplating. They're thinking about it. You yeah. Can see. yeah. And again, with us, uh, probably Sly and Matt running the team, it's a little, they're both bowling. Um, that's what, what's always amazed me with, like, um, what's well, happened with you guys, too, the odd time, Ty, when um, Des has been off site, but um, with Shane and the Rock and Rollers, too, the, the 100%. players, like, you've got so much on your mind anyway as a player. To mm -hmm. have to worry about all the other stuff. Yeah, we've seen it with Dream Crushers this year, right? Yeah, they have. They're doing the player manager, and I think it's. I think it's affected them a little bit. They're not at the level that they need to be because they're trying to watch the cameras and make sure the feed's right. okay and play their own game and make sure that they know who's going to pull and who's in charge of that. Tommy, oh, big shot! Huge. Really putting the pressure on Chantel yeah. here. This match, that game's only three points apart. <laughs> It's, I like it. I like ooh. Oh. That's huge. And she knows it. She knows it. Chantel is one of the most competitive. Get. Sean gets one to go. They're firing. Oh. They're firing now. Oh, oh no. I was about to say important sticks on the double, too. Yeah. Wow. You know, Chantel is... Tough eight. A tough eight for sure. And they are one, she's one of the most competitive females. Great mindset when she's out on the lane. So she's going to mm -hmm. be absolutely at that. So Sly and Matt looking to kind of save the eighth frame here for them. Ooh. Oh, and um, Miss Matt, Riley. And, yeah, you could just up for it and just looked up right at the end, wanting to strike so bad. That was a lot better shot. Yeah. Nice and relaxed. Really good trust. And your your four and five bowlers doesn't always just become a tenth frame thing. There's so many points in a game where yeah. you can either, you know, stop the bleeding or give your team a huge boost and turn it over to the lead off bowler. A hundred percent. And that's exactly what Sly just did. You know, they're coming into the home stretch here. They're two and three just opened and like not their best form. Um, you know, is a missing a chance to really go up on Corey and Chantel dropping a lot of points to Tommy. Ooh. Oh, did you chop oh, again? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Put from split to job. Yeah, a big, a big breather there. So if he can convert the spare, Quebec will be, like Steve said, stop the bleeding. Yeah, and at least keep their marks kind of comparable to the other yeah. side there too oh oh did that it looked like that slid in front of the two pin yeah. it certainly did it's just it's too thin. thin 
Well, and you see it all the time with your team, Tyler, with um, like how much easier is Brad's job when Cody's throwing like he often is. A hundred percent. Yeah. Right. When, when the anchor bowler knows that it's not just him, the fourth bowler sets up yeah. so many, uh, so many sticks for, for the anchor bowler. Yeah. It's a lot different when you only have to hit something instead of yeah. hit everything. Yeah. All right. Our top match. This one's getting uh, spicy folks. Yeah. Yep, huge shot for Fred against Robert. That was a lot more aggressive. Maybe a little over aggressive, but not bad. Yeah. Robert yeah. took a little bit longer on that shot than he normally did, too. Yeah, and I, I felt like his backswing was shorted a little bit there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I haven't watched in close enough detail, but that was the one thing that I kind of went, oh, that seemed a little short. Let's see if they can both cover their halves. Oh. oh. Something definitely threw his timing off a bit there. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. We're starting to see the emotion, folks. People, they, GP knows <laughs> how important this game is. Yeah. yeah. That's a big miss from Fred. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be looking at uh, about a 27, 28 pins. So huge sticks there for Fred, though, because now he can get yeah. the 315, which would force Robert to mark. Yep. And in this uh, second spot match, we've got a 42 point difference in favor of Lumberjacks and Iza here. Oh. That's a better Fred. shot. Oh, she got right. I remember Maybe Corey was... On the middle. Oh. It's better. It's better from both yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah you're remember Corey... That... Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, Larissa. No, it's just, uh, for um, Isabel there, she's, she's praying that something went because she's so on the middle, right? That's yeah. when you know you're shooting good, but it's just, just a little off. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more fingers. or. Totally. Yeah. And again, that's where it's tough as a coach slash manager because she's like been a ahead in the match the whole way pretty much. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. you also you also don't want to leave six behind for totals. Yeah, so many compounding factors. She's ahead in her match. She's hitting the middle. She looks mm -hmm. confident. It's just not yeah. executing. Yeah. There's one for Chantel yeah. back at it. Yeah. Tom, good shot for right corner. Pretty full. Looking like he was... And again, I'm kind of surprised not to jinx it, but they I think they've only had like one kick there. So that's yeah. much fewer than what we've seen. <laughs> totally. A big spare. Yeah. And he gets like it. That. Yeah, he knows it's big, right? Chantel has to restart essentially after that eighth frame. So lots of work for her. Yeah. Oh, that's big for Sly. Keep, keeps him in control. There was a, a risk there that he opens and, and Sean doubles. Yeah. Oh. That is it not what they wanted. Off balance. Yeah. And, it, and I think that too, balances out the totals now. And and I don't know how um how it would affect Sly with He's got so much experience, but um, oh, so when you're much, yeah. when you're going in the tenth, not worried about your match and just freewheeling for totals, that definitely makes it easier. I would say, yeah, hundred percent. Big from that. Okay, Quebec has done the job. They set up nine yeah. the way they wanted. Remember, their total is not counting in their marks. I'm not that good at math. I know Steve's a lot better than I am, so maybe he can get <laughs> us a more accurate representation. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, 45 and 45 that's basically 90 so 1093 1036 Brian throws a strike to get it to 15 and they would still be down a couple marks yeah so in favor of Quebec going into 10 here oh especially Ooh. after something like that a little seven split can see Scott in the background there. I think he's stressing a little bit. <laughs> oh. 
leaving some precious pins out there right now. And I think he was hoping to hit that on the inside, knowing that the, the right. potential to get the spare. Totally. With the pick. Oh, boy. Yeah, he kind of threw that one away. Yeah. So, um, Brandon, I hope you know how to add in points to the score, because I don't know how to do that. Yep. Uh, Perfect. Get that going in two seconds here. Awesome. So pressure on Fred here. Like we said, strikeout for 315 forces Robert to throw at least one mark. Can he have That's the first good. one? Yeah. Yes. Ooh, oh, no. no. Kind, of, kind of the same thing. Looked a little quick, which, um, especially when you drift right, because I dealt with it in my past. As um, soon as you get a little quick, you're not as square at the line as normal and usually you pull it yeah oh come on oh, <sighs> get... oh. oh. okay so that oh, corner will it. give the match yeah to holy rollers fred put in a huge effort there yeah. that's really all you can do robert's gonna fred walk knew. off the it looked lane like fred knew right yeah looks like uh you know robert's walking off the lane feeling and knowing how lucky he was there. Yeah. Going to take the win. And a great game. I mean, nothing wrong with a 311. Yeah, good match. Not how you want to finish after a six-bagger. Yeah. yeah. Well, and especially when, you know, you you hate opening the last two and luck and you're still down 30, 40 with totals. Yeah, it is going to be a big effect on total here. That's huge from Corey. Definitely yeah. working towards total. Because this one's not completely out of the woods either. It's not. It's not. Is this going to try to... Oh, no. Oh. She's, oh. she's got to get 15 to shut her out now. Yeah. Wow. wow this has wow, a potential wow. of 205, 203, if Corey can bang out. She's up there fast. Oh, that oh. is not, not what they're looking for here. Oh, dear. I wonder if Corey's watching. She must be. Oh, no. Oh. She gets no. it. Oh, huge. Huge. Okay, so we have 200 and... Sorry, Steve, you said 203 was the max for Corey. Actually. Yeah, so now a corner. Oh, 202, okay. So she needs okay. everything. She needs all of it. Oh, two, oh, did she get seven on the last ball? I didn't even look. Yeah. I turned away. Okay, oh, that's okay. a huge... Uh, that's so now, big stat. Big, big stat. strike. She needs a full strike. I wonder if yeah, they know how the important that two pin. Wow. Chantel looking to help sticks. Yes. Yeah. Make that interesting. Corey. Good. Oh, oh, no. Great comeback. She gave it a shot. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, we talk about That's... pinning all the time, and it doesn't necessarily just come down to making corners, right? Yeah. You look Correct. at the counts early in the game on head pins, or um, even even Corey there, unfortunately, two five counts oh, no. on Whoa. Look good. Yeah, totally, 100%. You're, you're absolutely correct. Oh, is it counting? Oh. Do you get the deuce, too, or is it counting wrong? No, she, um, it looked like she did. Okay. We will here. Uh, the Tom's playing for totals here. He's got the She match. did. She uh yeah, she did knock over that two pin as well. So total is really gonna really gonna come down to it here with seven yeah, points split. Really yeah. There's sixty Point. not count for right. Yeah. For the lump back so so but Tom's got his full frame to two count extra so balls. thirty to yeah. his. Wow, yeah. well done. Good execution there. Aggressive, confident at the line. Sly likes yeah. it. Yeah. So much roll on that ball. So Quebec doing what the rest of the league asked them to do and, and put up a huge game yep. to force Holy Rollers to shoot here. Just 
right now right now Ryland will have to steal a match from Matt to get more than two and they will need some huge help for totals yeah so chop off's not a bad count hmm <clears throat> Obviously, those that extra double is really going to help the total over Sean, who doesn't have anything to mark on here. Yeah. So the max for the Holy Rollers is going to be twelve forty nine. If may, if um, Sean and Rylan go off the sheet. Okay. So they're trying to. They're trying yeah. to. In the fifth match. Ryan has 247 left. So Matt, yeah. Matt can go 555 to get to 250 and shut him out. Okay. And that oh. will do it for total. Totals. Yeah. And now we just have to see if Steve jinxed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, did you guys say that total was locked up or? Yeah. Total will be locked up in favor of um, Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks, yes. Yeah. It's and gonna be six two for the Lumberjacks. Yeah, that match is going to go nice. to Matt as well. Spare shuts out Rylan. Maybe not, I was gonna say 56 points might do a lot of like, damage to the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the whole, whole league there. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Lumberjacks just win the whole whole thing, you know? Yeah. Yep. In a turn of events for today. Uh, tough finish from GP there. Obviously, you know, they gave it a good effort. You've got two doubles in the 10th, and they started with a strike. Um, Ryland kind of knowing the situation. It's basically the ninth frame. Yeah. It really, really was a struggle for them. The, the miss on the, you hate to point out Robert when he's on a six-bagger, but, you know. It's, it's tough when you're going up every ball and you know you, you've got three or four in a row and you know you, you need another one <laughs> every single shot, right? All right, let's get our um, managers in here. Steve, we've lost your camera <laughs> earlier, but you can hear it. Um, okay, teams, let's start with um, Sly. A good, guy, a good game from you guys. 6-2 win. How are you feeling? Uh, we're feeling good. Like, uh, that, that team played really well. Like, we always add string of strikes, you know, always running on something. Just our goal was just, like, keep the pressure the whole, the whole game. And and uh, at the end, they went on our side. So. Awesome. Well, congratulations. You know, it's always nice to finish the season on a high note. On the yeah, other side, definitely with with uh, three three wins to finish the season. The way we, we the season was going, and then uh, we, we kind of regroup and uh, super proud of the team, super pumped. Amazing. Um, I know it's a bit early, but we expect to see you back next year. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll be back next year. Uh, it might be some changes, but yeah, definitely the team. Uh, we're all uh, we're all uh, looking forward. Awesome. Well, congratulations again. Yeah. Thanks. So, so Scott, a little bit of a slow start, and then Robert got it going, and everybody else seemed to follow. You guys chipped back and made up about 150 there in pinfall. Got it close in the eighth frame, and then um, just a tough ninth frame for a few of you. But like we mentioned, it's hard for Robert when he's done four or five in a row, and then he has to get the next one, has to get the next one. But um, how how did you guys uh, how did you guys feel? Um, you know, it was a slow start for sure. Um, I kind of, that's kind of been our, I hate to say it, our, our thing all year. We've, we've gone off, gotten off to a slow start and by the fourth, fifth frame, we start getting it going. You know, we've got a couple guys that start off strong and, you know, we need everyone else to, you know, kind of follow that lead. So a little bit different, different season for us. You know, we had some adversity where we haven't, you know, we haven't faced that in the last two years. We've been doing this so um yeah it's kind of disappointing but you know that's the that's the the joys of uh of this so yes well we'll see how the rest of the the games fall but um you know you guys had a, a strong season still 
like you said, you fought back in a lot of matches and you, in a scenario where you could have just kind of rolled over in those, you didn't. And that's, that's impressive for the team. No, no, for sure. Absolutely. You know, the, the group never, never quit. They never gave up. Um, you know, it's six, two, it's not the outcome we wanted to see on the other side, but you know, Hey, the lumberjacks, they're, they're, they're a good team. So, you know, they're, I, I would say if that, that team can play to the potential that team has, they can be at the top of this, of the standings in no time. Like they, they are a very good team on paper. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And we've seen it with the, with the whole league, the, the depth of the league is just crazy. And if you, you don't bring it or even, you know, how many games we've seen this year where teams are losing with big 1200, 1300, 13 and a half, right? It, uh, yeah. It's, it's a tough crowd. Yep. Awesome. All right. We're going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, obviously, congratulations, Lumberjacks and Grand Prairie, your Holy Rollers. Tough one today, but we'll see how the rest of the season shakes out for you guys. Thanks, guys. And, all right, guys. Uh, see you guys all, whoever's coming down in a couple weeks. Right. Yeah, we'll see you we'll soon. See you Take, care. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye, guys. Cargill is proud to be supporting a truly Canadian sport like five pin bowling. We look forward to watching some great competition from many competitors and bowling centers across our country. With hundreds of locations across Canada, Cargill is committed to helping the Canadian farmer thrive. Whether it is selling commodities, getting agronomic advice, fertilizer needs, crop protection and marketing expertise, Cargill is here to help. So please enjoy this bowling. Thank you. When you come to the Canadian Brew House, you'll feel right at home. We work hard to make our house your house. With an affordable menu of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and killer deals on daily specials. At our house, you never miss a play. As sports lovers, we've ensured each location includes over 50 TVs and our signature Jumbotron. The Canadian Brew House is the place people want to be. back for commercial break we are going to hop right into our interviews for the next match so that we stay somewhat close to schedule here yeah. so we have palmer from the average pros and stacy from the top of roses hi guys how's it going good morning you guys? not too bad we're ready to rock and roll how about you two oh, yeah. good. Awesome. Stacy, how is the Roses happening, handling <laughs> a post Parker WCBT win? Well, we just make fun of them, guys. 
it's no big deal. It's a lot of pressure for Parker. We make a little fun of him like we do with everybody. And it's not really any different. We can't let it go to his head, right? So you guys can't commentate that all the time because then it gets like. Okay, we'll try our best. We'll try our best. No extra Thanks. interviews with him or anything, right? No, none. Okay. <laughs> and Palmer, your fearless leader. It's right here. What's up? What is happening here? I don't know why we keep the coach around. He never shows up except for when I don't show up. <laughs> uh, take notes might, on that, might, eh? Might be more than a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, that might be saying something. Well, Palmer's got one game left, so we're, he's on the chopping block here if he doesn't pull his weight. <laughs> oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so love Palmer. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the Palmer. home of the I'm in the home of the kingpins, and it's just making me feel all yucky inside. So <laughs> I won't stick around too long. Palmer, how is the uh, how's the team feeling there this morning? Oh, good. Last game of the year. It's nice and quiet down here today for some reason. I'm not sure why. But, uh... <laughs> guest stars all around it's a today. Guest star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to go pull. Good luck to my team. Love you guys. <laughs> Good luck, Henry. Um, Henry is obviously at Senior Masters today, which is why he is not with the team. But let's start with uh, the Roses lineup for this match. Oh, God, guys. I sent it in the <laughs> thing. Uh, Parker, Pamela, Jennifer, Christine, Derek, uh, Rich and Daryl be substitutes if needed, and Cello's on the bench. Amazing. On the other side, Palmer, what do we have for the average pros? Oh, good. Uh, Brandon and George, Sue, Mark, and Scott with Katie on the bench. Amazing. All right. Well, let's you guys go and warm up. We're going to run through the rosters and then we'll get going. Sounds good. All good. good. Luck, All right. Hey, guys. Good luck. All right. Brandon, can you start us off with the Top of Roses? Sure, we got uh, Parker Anderson, Rich Weber, Jennifer Smith, Derek Holm, Pamela Wilson, Marcello, I'm not even going to try, uh, Daryl Wood, <laughs> and Christine Poxa, manager Stacey Weber, bowling out of Toppler Bowl. Amazing. All right, and Larissa, can you run us to the next one here? Uh, for the average pros, we have Henry Schutz, Jordan Schutz, Mark Doss, Scott Rice, Katie Hicks, Sue Vandersloot, Brandon Hagen and their manager Palmer Hagen at a Sherwood Bowl in Edmonton. Awesome. All right, guys, let's hop into this one. Best of luck to the teams here. Uh, Steve, give us a rundown of the update to the stats after that match we just watched. All right. So that match with the Holy Rollers taking two moves them to 45 points. So looking at the standings, um, obviously. Toppler with three games today. If they take all 24, they can jump next gen by half a point. Again, that's a pretty tall order. Um, the Lumberjacks last game got them to 39 and a half. So a decent, decent finish for them, but they'll be out of the playoffs. Um, the Venom were at 50 and a half, so they dodged a bit of a bullet. The Holy Rollers didn't pass them. Um, yes. The so that'll lock are... them up, right? They uh, can't be caught by yeah. enough teams. Um, well, well, I guess they could, because Rock and Rollers, Trash Pandas, and you guys could all, and Roses. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> yeah. No. Nope. No. Nope. Yep. So as you mentioned, the Rock and Rollers, their last game today is against the Roses. Um, the Mayhem, we are at 39 with a potential of 55, but right now, obviously, 45 is the first number to get by, and then, then yeah. we'll worry about 50 and a half. Um, yeah, and the trash band is still mathematically in it with three games left as well. They play the Roses today, and then they play the Mayhem and Minto next week. Exciting. Still, All right. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Steve. Still lots Change of scenarios. <laughs> yeah, lots going on. Let's see what uh, we had one kind of spoiler this morning. Let's see if, if Orange can uh, double it up. Yeah. And the average pros have played better at the last few matches. Um, I know they gave us a good run. They got to about 1,300. They came down to the 10th frame for several matches and totals. 
Um, yeah. Again, again, and with the same with the Holy Rollers last week, the Holy Rollers just um, just had a good finish to catch them. Um, for sure. Yeah, for the average pros, it's kind of been just trying to get other people, other people going. Jordan and Brandon have been pretty solid all year, two sixty-five and two fifty-nine each, as far as average. Katie, 237. It's just there's a pretty good drop off after that. Yeah. 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 And then and after certain, we're also looking for a spoiler yeah. game here, too, right? Just to yeah. maybe and help some other teams out. Some of the recent matches, I think they put Brandon and Jordan together in the lineup just to kind of let them feed off each other and then hope that somebody else can get uh, to get going. Yeah. You know, they, they came into the season with a really strong game plan. They knew what lineup they were going to be playing pretty much every game. And unfortunately, it didn't work for them. So the last few weeks, they've had to experiment. And, and that's a big challenge when your ideal scenario isn't working. How's the champ today? <laughs> and again, with a lot of them. Oh, God. Aces. That's the first one of that today. Yeah, and I was saying, um, you know, on some of the deeper teams, having to switch the lineup wouldn't be as much of an issue. But um, the average pros, again, some of them don't have the provincial or cash tournament experience to mm -hmm. to have, to have played at the top or at the bottom. Yeah, they're a lot stronger when they're just allowed to freewheel and and yeah. throw their game. Oh, we got a late right. push. <laughs> Markets rule. And I think that's the scenario they're in here, right? They know yeah. that there's not nothing drastic on the line for the average pros here. Um, obviously, they're looking to get out of that last spot if they could. I think that would take a lot of work. I don't pull this back up here. They are, oh yeah. So they yeah, unfortunately they can, won't be able to, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're really just allowed to throw their ball. Christine and Scott Russell. struggled a bit this year. He played really well last year. I know last year he played the, yeah. the four hole in front of Jordan a lot. And last year he played really, really well. He we just struggled a bit this year in that um yeah, you, in this league you can't play with only three people going. You you need you need five or six. Yeah. <laughs> So the good shots from the roses were really, really good. The not so great yeah. shots were really, really not yeah. so great. Uh, and the average pro started off strong. Five great balls. Unfortunately, Sue's didn't yeah. take. Um, but not a bad start for either team. All over the middle. Yeah. And again, the Roses today with their last three games, just um, a lot can happen with what they do in the stand. You know, they so make much. a yeah. huge jump either way. Absolutely. That's going to be a factor, though, as well, is that they're playing three games back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back today rather than uh, yeah. having mm -hmm. totally. a bit more split up. That momentum can go either way, right? It can be in yeah. their favor today, or if they start with a struggle, it, it could be dangerous. Yeah. Brandon putting the pressure on early with a double. Yeah, because if they have a clunker their first game and theoretically what should be their easiest game, and, and no disrespect, but just that's but the Based numbers. Based on how the standings are, yeah. And then they start pressing a bit, and then you never know what happens. But they've got a lot of experience, and, of course, they've got, um, you know, even look at this game. They've got Rich Weber and Daryl on the bench, and both have been just so solid for them. Well, yeah, so, so good. Yeah. Larissa, sounds like the trash pandas are rolling in. Yeah, they're all getting they're getting set up over here. Yeah. How are they looking? Anyone in rough shape coming in on crutches? What do you got for us? Uh, Details? No. Insider information. <laughs> um, Curtis was wearing his sunglasses inside, so a that's classic. the only roughest the roughest one I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought Sue was gonna tap the middle with that one. Pam getting a lot more break off that ball. She's going to pick up her corner here. Let me see if I can pull up. I know that the Roses have been playing incredibly well this year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, still in a position to take that uh, top seed. 
Uh, yeah, I've got their see. averages if you want. Yeah, do you want to run us through that? Yeah, like you look at – I mean, it just shows the strength of the league. They lose um, the Holdsworths and pick up Christine and Derek. Derek this year playing anchor every game has been averaging 284 with seven wins in eight games. Which wow, is yeah. Crazy. Um, Daryl's been averaging 276, Christine 264, Cello 265, Jennifer 240, Parker 277. 277 playing leadoff most of the time, 67 frames. He's only got two wins. Now, wow. Tyler, you might be responsible for one of those, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but Rich 268 average. Pamela hasn't played a whole lot and she struggled a little bit, but um, when the other, when the other seven are rolling that well, that's just. That that's amazing. Yeah. And you know, like impressive for Christine. She's not even playing a league this year. She's really just shooting shooting pro or she might be playing one league, I think. Um, but not really playing any tournaments and she's still able to come in with such yeah. confidence and aggression. Yeah. And and again, we see it with the depth on the teams when you've got um the three women they have i mean tyler you know with your team right when you when your women are that strong and that just adds to the depth there are a couple things that kind of i don't want to say scrounging for women but there's there's a bit of a drop off totally yeah and i was going to comment that you know this team is so strong all around they're playing their three women's to start and i i doubt they'll have to pull any of them like yeah. You know, unfortunately, there are a lot of teams where, uh, you know, it's a fact our women's game is struggling. Um, there's so many factors to that. But across the board, we see lower participation numbers. In Alberta, we're fortunate. But there are some teams where they really have to to pick their women um, and beg them, you know, or, or I don't want to say beg, but they have to be smart about how they get them to play like the uh kingpins for example they have uh coral coming in from saskatoon because central alberta just the numbers aren't there yeah yeah it's kind of i mean that's kind of the same for us here in the south i mean we have enough ladies funny. so um, yeah but you're so spread out events, and... right yeah exactly yeah. Uh, like i mean I think everyone across the country would go, Diane Violini, but yeah. <laughs> you guys play in Medicine Hat and she lives in Lethbridge. So that's still exactly, a two hour yeah. drive. Oh, there you go, Pam. That's a lot better. They're rolling here now too. Yeah. Brandon just firing up at the top there. Great energy. So passionate about the game. Nice ball. That was really good. I'm sure Brandon Hagen's also got a fair bit more confidence rolling behind him after his uh, yeah. vagina performance. Absolutely. Yeah, he did really well. That almost got his second perfect game, too. Yeah. Yes. Two in one year. That would have been incredible. I know he Susan a, gets her strike. Big shot. What was that, Brandon? Sorry. I know he had Jaden sweating in the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, maybe not her strongest frame there with a three pin. I thought she had a shot at the half. Crossing yeah. over a little thin ball like the flat dude. Toddler's much. always a, you know, like it's a really good house to play at, but it's also, it can eat you up. I find it's a lot like Red Deer. You know, oh, look at the average pros wow. firing at this frame. Good frame. They came to play. We'll see if Scott can finish it up. Do the duties of an anchor here. Christine's going to score. And I'm sure they would love to put up a huge, huge number and then uh, mention it, he wasn't there. <laughs> I'm sure they would. I'm sure they would. Well, I definitely a know little... what you mean there, Ty, on the uh, Red Deer will beat you up, though. Yeah, right? You know, it's it's one of those interesting houses where that score is there. Like, you can you can run it, but my goodness, you start throwing that just off or a little too tight, and it just eats you up. Oh, Scott can't yeah. convert the three-pin either. <laughs> 
It did wiggle. It wiggled. It wiggled. So I don't know if you guys were watching the Cargill division last week or not, but um, my partner, who does not bowl at all, he's played one recreational league in his life, <laughs> decided to call anytime you get a three pin on a mark, a shit in the tub. Oh. <laughs> so we've had one already this game. We'll see if we end up with any more. <laughs> but moving forward, if you would like to harass your teammates at your leagues or your practices or even your open provincials, go throw a three pin after a mark. You can tell them they shit in the tub. Well, I know what I'm telling Riley every time he throws a three pin. It has to be on a mark, though. It has to be on a mark. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll make sure. <laughs> three pins on their own are just, that's just a bad ball. But on a mark, oh boy. See, I usually just go nice brick to uh, guys like Harm. <laughs> nice brick, that's fair. So coming into the fourth, top of the fourth here, we have 356 with four strikes and two doubles for the average pros. One of those doubles just ended. Uh, and Top of Roses with 283 and three strikes. And they're both counting in, right, the marks? Or? I believe so, yes. I cannot remember how the Mendez system works. But I do believe... Oh, push it a little oh. thick. I think I think that's a fair result. Good cover from that. Yeah. It's a nice conversion. Keeps his marks alive, puts the pressure on Parker. Yeah, Can't let them. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Steve. I was just saying, I believe totals are accurate. Right, right. I thought so too. Um, you can't let Brown get too far ahead, you know, to start the game here. Yeah especially in that leadoff position. It just has such a mental implication for the rest of the team when they see that lead bowler just kind of running away. It takes so much pressure off the rest. I think that was something that for them, um, you know, changing the lineup later in the year and having Brandon Jordan up top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little, know. little more pressure on the bottom one, or the bottom two, but I think anyone, three especially, or four, would kind of free wheel more when you're following more marks. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh that was a good break. Too. Oh, we have lost Toppler. Yeah. Uh, I will get a good quick refresh on that. There we go. Oh, that was real close. Real close. So while they were away there, Jen obviously popping another head pin. We'll see how many more frames Stacey lets her have. Yeah, with Sue being two marks there. And lots of freedom with their pulls with all three in the lineup. Yeah, and good cover from Mark. And that's that's the difference for average pros right now. You know, obviously a, a minus got there, but they're they're converting their spares. I mean, they have a crap ton of strikes as well, but they're converting their spares, and that's making their score just skyrocket early in the game. Yeah. Here. Christine can kind of get back on it after that oops train. Right the ship, as we say. That looked better. Looks like she liked it, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 oh, oh. No, no luck for me. Roasted. I love the way Christine throws the ball. It's so simple and so, like, unsuspecting, and it just pushes everything. You know, we see a lot of those little slower balls jumping corners, and hers just yeah. pushes right through. Oh, nice ball from Derek. Yeah, just such an easy style. Seems to get such heavy roll on the ball. Yeah. Which is, just... is important these days, especially, right? There's some centers, and I've seen it with Sherwood with the yeah, average pros, too. Uh, they do jump the left corner. The first thing that happened to Katie three times in the game last week, where yeah. you know, the ball deflects so much on some, some houses, you know, especially depending on the black bases they're using, the age of everything. And... Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
So Average Pro's looking to carry this super strong start into the, the commercial yeah. break here. Not wanting to let up though, because the Pro's is oh. down here. Yeah, Roses are doing what they do best, and they're figuring it out ball by ball. There we go. Yeah, Yeah, you don't put up the uh, resume those guys and ladies have for when you panic after two frames. <laughs> I know. Not at all. That looks better from Pam. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Chris tried to guide that one in there a little bit. You know, that left-handed bowler on that left corner? Yeah. Always a, a risky situation. That's a lot better. better. Oh, Jen. She oh, looks... was that a ace? Oh, nope. it looks really... Close again. She's just popping out of that shot right at the end. I think now she's looking for that strike instead of trusting that shot. And staying down and through. That's a lot better, though. Nice and square to that pin. Yeah. That was such good extension all the way through to that left corner. Yeah. Good shot from Jordan there. Keep the marks going. Totally. He's not going to let Pam back in that match. I got to say, I love the uh, the she used to describe some of these shots that are time. <laughs> Tyler, because when you're dealing with a game that is about minimizing mistakes, it really is just those finite ways that you look at things. Yeah. Bombs from all of our ladies here. We should acknowledge it was uh, International Women's Day a, a few days ago. So, you know, an appreciation goes out to all of our females on our crew here, Larissa, um, and all of our female athletes. Um, you know, a special shout out to Stacy running the Diamond Ladies, the work that they do. Oh, that was gross. Sorry uh, to interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he thought that was a strike? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but a special shout out to Stacy for running the Diamond Ladies. And, you know, is really... Toppers cameras frozen for you guys as well? No. It's a little choppy, but not frozen. Topper. Seven marks, including two strikes and two doubles, heading into the break. Yeah, five eighteen with lots of score to count on. Okay, yeah. which pros Ooh. trying to stay ahead? Got pulled that one again a bit. That... Wait, what was that again? Uh, That's a shit, shit in the tub. tub. Yeah, that <laughs> sure was. <laughs> So we'll see what happens after the commercial break here. You know, they may take some time to figure some things out as a team. But other than that five spot, they are just rolling. Yeah. All right. So with that, totals are 660 to average pros with two doubles and a strike. And Roses are playing 518 with, as Steve said, seven marks and two doubles. Two of those yeah. being doubles. We'll hop into our commercial break and we'll be back in just a moment.
Cargill is proud to be supporting a truly Canadian sport like five pin bowling. We look forward to watching some great competition from many competitors and bowling centers across our country. With hundreds of locations across Canada, Cargill is committed to helping the Canadian farmer thrive. Whether it is selling commodities, getting agronomic advice, fertilizer needs, crop protection, and marketing expertise, Cargill is here to help. So please enjoy this bowling. Thank you. When you come to the Canadian Brew House, you'll feel right at home. We work hard to make our house your house. With an affordable menu of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and killer deals on daily specials. At our house, you never miss a play. As sports lovers, we've ensured each location includes over 50 TVs and our signature Jumbotron. The Canadian Brew House is the place people want to be. are back 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 again we can see katie hicks uh warming up over on the uh, lane three there so we'll see if we've got a pull coming in for the average pros this frame yeah the only possible thought that we got obviously yeah, yeah. Uh, now, like, we've, yeah. we've seen katie have some huge finishes in the past but you know it's a little <clears throat> As a manager, it's a little tougher bringing someone in on the bottom. Right. It is a risky scenario. I mean, you place so much trust in your anchor to pull them, yeah. kind of disrupts the feeling of the team. But Katie is that player on the average pros who has the provincial and national experience. So yes, yeah. for sure. I would feel more than comfortable making that change. Yeah, and especially Scott's missed three out of the last four frames too. So it's yeah. a little different if you know someone's really, really close, but if someone looks like they're struggling finding their rhythm and find the middle, you know, you're, totally. you're almost not trusting them right now to throw the shot too. So, a hundred percent. Brandon starts that frame off with a spare, you know, correcting his uh, little mistake there, and Parker opens, so that match swings back in favor of Brandon. Oh, no. yeah. She's pulling on that. I was going to say, you could see that she tried to force that one into the middle yeah. instead of letting her arm roll it into the middle. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, that was an explosion. Jordan. Holy. Yeah. I think Jordan is, well, it, the competition out there is so strong now, Tyler, as you, as you know. <laughs> but Jordan's <laughs> got to be on the cusp of breaking through. He's coming so close to, you know, whether it's the open or cash tournaments taking huge runs. This game is so simple and he throws such a nice shot. It's, yeah. I think it's just coming down to confidence and experience now. For Absolutely. Sure. He's been our open ultimate twice in a row now, which breaks my heart because he's so, so good. Um, but that does speak to the level of competition um, here in Edmonton. Yes. He was a little short there. You can see she just cheated herself out of the last little follow through. The beauty of uh, this game, sorry, I was just going to say, the beauty of this game is these teams are free to make whatever pulls they want. We saw last game, you know, GP got stuck with having to leave Corey in the two hole. Right. Um, we are not in that situation, so it'll be interesting to see what happens these last five frames with pulls. I was going to say, Sue shot there. She, she you know, just missing right with the first one. I think if she's not on a strike, she has a better chance to make the spare. I think it's hundred percent. Almost looked like in her head that she was making sure she didn't go through the hole again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Something I try and teach our our kids, like if you're not on a mark, who cares if you're fighting? Don't right. don't yeah. take away your chance of getting the spare. Yeah. Mark fired up. Obviously, He's loving. Yeah. Obviously, if you're on a strike, you want to make sure you hit the inside pocket. Yeah. Or, or at least miss pin side, but literally.
So this could be a stand shot for Scott here. Ooh, that's oh. not going to be it. That's, that's not going to be it. Nope. Yeah, the nod there. Yeah, yeah. I think bowlers around the country knew. We all looked back at our coach at the same time and went, take me out. <laughs> so Derek, I think, getting tapped on that one. I didn't actually see it, but converts it easily. So here we see Katie Hicks. We'll call it a warm-up shot. He's on the middle. Yeah. Well, average pros decent again. They still got two doubles and a mark heading into seven. Exactly. Yeah. Still pretty even in marks here. Yeah. And up, up about a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So it's it's key now that they the last few. Last few weeks they've been in matches late and just kind of either had a an average finish or struggled a bit and team to take the game away from them. Like, I think it's important to just trust the process and keep throwing your shots. Yeah. yeah. We do have another sub coming in. Uh, Daryl Wood is going to go in for Pamela at the first ball this frame. Okay. That was a good shot from Brandon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Steve, I'm I'm interested in your thoughts here. Um, obviously, Jordan is just rolling. Would you have made this pull, or would you have taken out Jen, who's not playing bad? She's on the middle, but she's closer in her match. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Pick and two two left corner spares. It's hard to pull on corner spares. Yeah. Um, def definitely would have done this one if nothing else, just to give Jordan a different look. And then right. I mean, it's had a bonus to that Daryl Daryl or Rich coming in, right? But yeah. Two great, but two great players. Up there. Totally. Uh, yeah. Well, it might have worked. Other, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the other thing with Jen too, if you're in a situation where you need Strikes, even if she's playing well, not getting strikes, she kind of have to put that in the back of your head. It's like, if we need a triple or a four bagger. Yeah. Who, who am I going to get it from? Yeah, right. this is Jen Smith, who is, yeah, again, yeah. a resume a mile long. Exactly. Yeah, and I, like, I was thinking that maybe you know Jen has that experience too, right? Where she can definitely push through, um, yeah. regardless if she's down in a match or not. Yeah. She'll definitely and, push and to get as down. many points. And now only down 23 if exactly yeah oh, oh wow that was that's different for sue you know she's normally that one that we talk about that ball jumping in front and she went straight behind that time and that's probably the frustrating part for her because she hits that one thin and it cuts through but she catches much more of the middle and it's probably gonna jump in. yeah christine putting up strike after strike there too yeah saying and mark, mark you better go yeah <laughs> And I mean, Mark is going too, right? He's throwing really well. Yeah, that game is, you know. That'll be the close game, right? 19, 20 points as well. Like, yeah. yeah, 19 if Mark throws a strike. If he doesn't throw a strike here, he's got a huge game going and not necessarily winning. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Our equalizers here are the two and the five, you know. Two in favor of average pros, five in favor of the roses. It's the only thing keeping us balanced. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> oh. I love it. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. no. He, oh, that was a good Wow. Shot. Way to think make things interesting. And Derek is so good. Like when you've got a team and you've got someone like him on the bottom who doesn't get phased by anything and yeah. It doesn't matter what he has, you know, he's got experience and a talent to just, you know, suck it up and, and throw a good shot when needed. A hundred percent. Gives everyone out that confidence. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, Mark's That's those really I'm... confident shots, right? Yeah, I'm loving seeing a, a higher spare percentage. I mean, they they can do better, but they're so strong today with their spares, and it's just it's amazing to see. 
you know, we do have a lot of uncertainty in the 5PL moving forward just with teams that'll be staying and teams that, um, oh, that's a tough break for Katie. Uh, with teams that'll be staying and teams that are moving on, you know, we are not the NHL here. We're not <laughs> million dollar franchises. Um, and life happens. So I'm hoping that whatever happens, the average pros do get to stay. We saw in their first year that they came out firing. They were competitive. Um, this year obviously has not been the strongest for them, but let's call it a sophomore slump and and see what they can do because there's so much potential. Yeah. Well, and the, yeah, the tough part is the league's just so strong, right? We talked about the start that the mayhem got off. We had five points in four games, and our low game was like 12 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So a chance here for Toffler heading into eight, just down less than 100, and now they've got the advantage in marks. Thank you. Too. Oh. Mm. Just can't get a, a run going for himself there. Yeah. It's not the Parker that we saw in Regina, that's for sure. No. Brandon's going to give him a little bit of a chance, you know, a little wide again. Um, he has that big, big pause in his approach, and I think sometimes right. it can be a detriment as much as it's an advantage to his timing. That's such a mm -hmm. an uncontrollable thing, right? You really have to nail how long that pause is. Yeah. Hello? Oops, My sorry. Added people in and it there we go. <laughs> We're back. Here, a good shot there. from Daryl. Yeah. That was what Stacy was hoping for last week. Yeah. Again, Parker four strikes on the left lane. Four opens on the even lane. Yeah. Except we're only playing on one lane. <laughs> or four non strikes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jen, there she you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly what we were talking about, it. right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That was a good a shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's been the difference out at Sherwood this year, I think. Um, you know, last year we saw lots of those late pushes, those big rolls, lots like we see at Bonnie Dune and Grand Prairie. And this year it just it hasn't been the same with their pinfall. Oh. Yeah, almost wow. almost a few more power chops and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, fortunately, oh, that's a little thick. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. She got away with that one for sure. Fortunately, Jordan has built up about a hundred point lead, but he can't do that too many more times. Right. Oh, and the frustrating part when you're in that situation, you know you've you've given back like forty six in totals to the other team. Yeah. That's right on it. Without yeah, a doubt, she... Christine. That's a way better yeah. shot than Sue. Sue wow. Liked it. That was a really good shot. That might have been the best ball I've seen her throw all year. Yeah. Stuff that right in the right pocket. Wow. Ooh. Wow, wow, wow. Didn't get There's a break on our... that one. As much as uh, Stacy loves it, that's a power chop. <laughs> Mark's Mark. gonna get one. Yes. Yep. Answers back. Absolutely. So that match is now down to four points. Um, kind of somewhat even on Mark's there. Yeah, hopefully, Katie can get something going here. Yeah, Average Pro's really needing that bottom player to fire now. Um, yeah. Obviously, Daryl came in and kind of righted the ship in the two. That looks better. Oh. Oh. Uh. No kick. No kick at all. No, so we just sat together and just died there. Hold on. Whew. We were all sweating a little bit there. Yeah. So they got everybody's got marks going in eight and then going into nine now. Yeah, pretty even again. 
One extra double on uh, the Rose's side, but we've got 1034 to 971 in favor of average pros going into 9 and 10. There we go. Oh. 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 <laughs> the Pick benefits of. Yep. Oh, Pick into a another. chop and a roast. That would be a situation, even as much as I've bowled, where I would be fuming mad that I just threw a bomb and got roasted, and my opponent threw a head pin and had a chance for a spare. Right. Yeah. Obviously, Parker did not convert, showing his frustrations there. Yeah. Uh, this is not the game we expected out of him. Obviously, Steve um mentioned his average earlier so this is this is yeah. uncharacteristic and for him i yeah. think for parker like you'll see that he's gonna have a bad game now but like watch for next game he's gonna be yeah. hot oh that was a bomb he's one of those players that really takes those frustrations and just like plays with it right oh yeah uses it as motivation absolutely yeah for sure big shot from jordan much better execution. Huge, yeah. Jen is feeding off of that strike. You could see it. She was ready to go. Yeah. It's been really interesting to see Jen's um, kind of arc throughout this season, missing Masters last year, which is a huge tournament for her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, playing events this year, being strong, playing pro league, being strong, and still, like, it just, I feel like there's one little degree missing from Jen. Not that she's doing poorly, but I just want to see that fire, that explosiveness from her. Yeah. yeah back to back bombs there for Sue. Yeah, I agree. And it's funny because I make the comparison a little bit. She's going to kill me with Linda <laughs> McLean, right? Mm -hmm where she's still good, still throws the ball really well. Um, physical game still there, but just kind of that, that fire, that extra little degree of confidence that she had when she was younger. Yeah. Just a little, yeah, just Ooh, not, both. not quite the same. We got a plug and a shit in the tub. <laughs> not our best frame folks. <laughs> nope. Look away, look away, go grab your popcorn. Come back in a second. We're big, big sticks here. Yeah, really big sticks. Yeah, especially for Mark here, right? To stay in it. And... Yeah, he's got the extra count with the strike versus the spare. Yeah. No, I totally agree with you, Steve. Like they're obviously both Linda and uh, Jen are still incredibly competitive, and you can see that. But, but there's just something from when they were at the peak of their game that seems to be just just under the surface still it's not it hasn't picked the head out yet yeah so right. almost like sit situationally and i know i again she's gonna kill me but <laughs> <laughs> but like with with okay. linda like situations when she was younger where she would just like go into full-on aggression mode and take over right now just not quite the same confidence mm -hmm. and fire mm -hmm. yeah okay so Pending Katie's ball here, we've got 1097 for the Roses with a double, a spare, and a strike going into 10. And uh, 1133 with a double, a spare, and a strike. And oh. that's going to be it um, for the pros. <laughs> um, so even on marks, yeah. uh, you know, Roses have a little bit of work to do. I don't think this is the situation they expected themselves to be in here. No, nope. nope. but again, they might look at, you know, and especially the, they're not playing that great, but they still have a shot, right? They still yeah. have a shot, yeah. But, and I think this is exactly the situation the average pros envision themselves in. It's been where they've been all season long, leading the game, and now they need to convert. And that's yeah. where the average pros have to work and practice and develop those skills that these players who play cash events and provincials and nationals have already developed. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And some and it just comes down to confidence and experience. 
like you talk about, right? Yeah. When, when you've been in the situation and you trust yourself, you're you're in a different mindset than than someone who's like, oh, oh God, look at that. <laughs> yeah. So our top match is going to go to the average pros. Brandon will uh, quite handily take this match off of Parker here. Not yeah. Parker's best. But can't stop pile off your photos. Yeah. Brandon is going to try and put as many points down there as he can. And again, I Parker, stay down there. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. No, I was going to say Parker, like four punches late to count the, the one in nine that turned into a chop off. But yeah, yeah, all, all over, I just, just couldn't find the pocket. Yeah. So Daryl here has a potential for 268. Not oh. after that. Sorry, I'm <laughs> first. I will take that back. Um, so that means our second match is also going to average pros. Whoa. Oh, shit in the tub. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'll let that one speak for itself. <laughs> So we have a 208 and a 202 on the Roses side. Brandon probably going to finish in the 290s here. I'm calling 299. Oh, prove me wrong. <laughs> Yo, Brandon. Not with any. Big scare. Got it. So that puts her at 227, maxing out at 242, and Sue's at, well, 220, as you can see on the screen, but she's on the double. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah, so Sue would go 555 for 250. Yeah. We just saw that with um, Matt and uh, Rylan, almost okay. the same scenario. Similar, yeah. Jordan, just trying to get as many points as he can to take down to the bottom there. And again, the situation too with um, in different centers, they're, they're a bowler ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of, when you're trailing, that's not necessarily what you want. <laughs> no. Yeah. Knowing that. Side. Oh. Oh. So three punches in that last frame from the off of roses there. Yeah, and you can see the frustrations. Yeah. You know, I really thought that scenario was going to actually benefit Christine. As as strong as she is to play the the bottom there, I think she's a really great lead off and just not having the pressure on her, I really thought she was going to throw a bomb. Yeah. In a great game and just back back to back picks at the end for her. Yeah. So uh, all Mark will have to do is hit something and stay behind the line. <laughs> Sue's looking to seal it here. Big strike. Okay. Yes. Oh. Wow. Huge. Derek would, have to bang, yeah, Derek would have to bang out for 1276, I believe. So. Yeah. And with two bowlers to go. Yeah. We are. We're looking at seven one here, folks, for the average pros. Not the way the Roses wanted to start. That's going to, you know, that makes the next couple games a little, yeah. a little, a little dicier for them. Huge exactly, game from yeah. Sue. Yeah. You know, that's exactly what she needed. Obviously, this season has not been her strongest. Oh, Derek, that's unfortunate. Wow. Um, so that'll do it. That's everything wrapped up with that corner right there. Yep. What a great game for Sue, though. Um, like I was saying, not her best season so far, but... A 270 to win a match like that, it's, uh, it's really good for her. Oh, good. Oh, wow. I was wow, saying good wow. break and then even better break. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that'll go a long way for Mark's confidence. Here. I think he's had some, he's had some rough finishes at times this year. Yeah. So, uh, I think just being able to prove to yourself that to, that you can actually do it, you know, yeah. and, it, and it's hard to practice these situations, right? 
You can go 100%. out and throw ball after ball after ball and do well. Yeah. You know, until, until you've lived it a few times. 100%. You have to fail in those scenarios before you can succeed. Um, and as much as we talk about practicing, you're 100% correct. These scenarios with the pressure, the energy, the people around you, you cannot practice. You have to put yourselves in those scenarios by playing tournaments yep. and be prepared to fail. We don't want to, but no. you have to be prepared to. So we'll watch Katie finish up. You know, hopefully she can just let herself roll knowing what the business is. No. Oh. <laughs> Why not? She says, Why not? And really, she, she came in knowing that she can't afford to miss, right? When you need, you come in off the bench and you're trailing yeah. them out by that much, you, you got to hit the middle. And that's what she did. Every frame, yep. Every frame she was on the middle, um, just didn't break her way. So 12.59 for Toppler Roses, taking one point that bottom match to the average pros, 13.04 for seven points. Congratulations. Let's get those managers in here. Oh, God, it's on me. Why is it on me? Ah, there we go. <laughs> I told you there'd be at least one, one goof today. All righty, folks. What a match. That was exciting to watch. Um, Average pros, seven points, 1,300. What does that feel like? Oh, you are muted, Palmer. Get it together. It's all for you, Ty. Thank you. Thank you. I feel honored. Uh, it's all good. We're going to keep Henry down in the uh, Stettler Render area for next season. So. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. I'm, I've already got my resume out. Obviously, you guys don't need me. 7-1, so I'm going to send it out. Maybe the kingpins will keep me here or something. Uh, we'll, we'll trade you for a couple sets of rental shoes and some spray or something. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, awesome. boy. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Uh, I Good I'll, I'll leave you guys to it, man. Hey, love you guys. Love you too, buddy. So, Palmer, like you guys have been near the end of the year, you had several games that were like that, but you just weren't able to, to finish it off the last couple of frames. That time you did. Plus, um, you know, we'll have good finishes for, for Sue, and especially, you know, we're saying Mark's had some rough finishes. So yeah. to see him finish well is, is great, but that must feel great. Um, being able to finish off a game like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then and they're, and they're season that way, too, that uh, that really helps us with the confidence, right? So we knew we had this in us. We just didn't show it all year. So. Yeah, totally. So, Stacey, not well, to start. You guys wanted to the day, but uh, historically, you like to keep things exciting. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? The, the average pros were were above average. They were throwing a ton of strikes for us, and that's good for them. Like it's uh, what it is. It's another match, and we have two more to go today. And you know, I'm sure they're trash talking each other out there, and uh, maybe you know, Parker's probably gone for a little bit of a walk. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's just another match. We have two more. Absolutely, that's a great attitude. Um, all right, just looking at the schedule here, we're going to run into our commercial break, and then uh, Stacy, we'll see you in a moment, and Palmer, congratulations again. That's a great finish for you guys. Thanks, guys. Good luck the rest of the day, Stacy. Thanks, Palmer. Way to go.
Cargill is proud to be supporting a truly Canadian sport like five pin bowling. We look forward to watching some great competition from many competitors and bowling centers across our country. With hundreds of locations across Canada, Cargill is committed to helping the Canadian farmer thrive. Whether it is selling commodities, getting agronomic advice, fertilizer needs, crop protection and marketing expertise, Cargill is here to help. So please enjoy this bowling. Thank you. When you come to the Canadian Brew House, you'll feel right at home. We work hard to make our house your house. With an affordable menu of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and killer deals on daily specials. At our house, you never miss a play. As sports lovers, we've ensured each location includes over 50 TVs and our signature Jumbotron. The Canadian Brew House is the place people want to be. Alrighty, we are back. Two matches down, we're halfway. Um, let's revisit the standings really quick before we bring in our next managers. So, uh, average pros taking seven, obviously putting them at 24 for the season. And then the Rose is taking one, so they're up to 43 and a half. We know the Holy Rollers took two, so they're at 45, so they still have some work to catch them. Uh, and they are up against the Trash Pandas, who are down at 28 there, but they have three games to play. So, it's going to be exciting. Yep, sure is. The The first two games, um, definitely the Trash Pandas were probably happy with those results. It keeps the number a little more in grasp for them. Absolutely. So, so we'll be curious to see whether that's something they're thinking about, or with one mm -hmm. game left this week and two games left next week, yeah. Larissa, how's the energy there? You are on scene. Um, really good. They're throwing lots of strikes. They're, everybody's up practicing. Um, I think they only have one on bench today, maybe. So that'll be interesting. We'll find that out shortly. Let's bring on yeah. in the managers. <laughs> Welcome back, Stacy, and hello, Sharash Pandas. How are we? Good morning. Good. 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 All right, Stacy, how are you guys doing? You ready to go? I hope so. <laughs> Mash some heads together. Nah, we have the Carnage playing right now too, so there's a lot of red shirts in here that are could be good. Yeah, and I think the quick turnaround helps, right? You don't have time to think or dwell. Or Again. Well, I don't think we really think very much most of the time. <laughs> and, and for you guys, obviously, three games left. Um, don't know if you guys are looking at the stage. The first two results a little bit. Um, is that something you're thinking about, or are you just out there throwing today? Well, everybody knows where we're standing. Kara always has the standings pretty good, so we know where we're at and what they need to do, so... Uh, we're a little short on staff today. We've only got one spare, so hopefully everybody's on. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, well, Stacey, you're going to run us through your lineup again here first, and then we'll get Ken's. Okay, oh. so it's Marcello leadoff, Rich in second, Daryl in third, Christine in fourth, Derek in fifth, uh, Parker and Pam will be on the bench, and Jennifer is going to sit this game. All right. And Ken, what are we playing over on your side? Uh, we've got Connor leadoff, Derek second, Michelle third, David's fourth, Curtis anchoring, and Kara's on the bench. Amazing. All right. We'll let you guys go throw your last and, few warm -ups. And, J and JC if she shows up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, will you guys go finish your warm ups there? We're going to run through the rosters and we'll get going after that. Sounds good. Thanks. Good luck. Good luck. All good. 
All right, Brandon, do you want to run us through the trash pandas? She must not be coming or she'd have been here. Sure, we got uh, is that JC or Josie? JC. JC Bruski. Um, Connor Lovett, Curtis Deering, Kara Deering, David Sisko, Derek Lewicki, Michelle Manson, Janelle Mayer, and Ken, Ken Kurtz as the manager of Bowling at a Pano Lanes. Perfect. All right. And Steve, do you want to run us through the Toppler one more time? Sure. Parker Anderson, Rich Weber, Jennifer Smith, Derek Holm, Pamela Wilson, Marcello Jurisic, Dura Wood, Christine Posla, and managed by Stacey Weber at Toppler Bowl in Calgary. Amazing. All righty, folks. Let's get bowling. Ooh, we'll see if we can freshen up maybe their score camera there. On the trash pandas, because that's going to be uh, tough to see. Really zoomed in. <laughs> I think it's just really zoomed in, to be honest with you. I zoomed in. Okay. Interesting. Well, Larissa, you may be in charge of reading us numbers. I, I, usually, <laughs> I usually am. I'll, just, I'll usually like flag them down or um, fix this, fix this. Or if there's a head in front, yeah. then I'm like shoving them out of the way. Or... <laughs> Yeah, maybe if they can move that camera closer somehow. I'm not sure what their setup is, but we'll see. All right, so we have uh, Toppler Roses up against Trash Pandas. One more quick look at the stats here. Trash Pandas sitting at 28 um, with three games to go, a max of 24 points, which 24 plus 28 is 52. So that could put them ahead of Venom if they took all eight of every game, but that's that's a big order. Um, and the Roses now sitting at 43 and a half with two games to go, so 16 points would give them 59 and a half. Yeah. If I'm doing my correct, correct maths there. Um, so still within reach for them, but they got to put the work in, that's for sure. And certainly a big game here for the Roses as we watch some uh, fancy juggling there. Um, My heart rate just went through the roof. Because uh, you know, if they take... They're going to try and move the camera closer. Perfect. That would be greatly appreciated. So again, just look in scenarios. The Roses take six here. They would be tied with Rock and Rollers heading into the last game. Interesting. Which could bring other teams into play. Again, the Venom 50 and a half. Um, Mayhem's got two games left. We can max at 55. As you mentioned, Trash Pandas still have 52 points left. Yeah. So while we get that uh, camera set up there, Marcello starts off with a big strike. Oh, they changed. better. <laughs> Let's see if Brandon can work his magic. Now. Rich, starting off with a headband. So again, we we get to see the depth of the teams, right? Yes. Rose, roses have a bit of a tough game, so um, you know they're able to bring in two fresh bodies in Marcello and Rich. <laughs> To play yeah. one, two. Yeah. Two really strong players, too, right? Lots yeah. of energy. Yeah. I think it'll be okay if they leave the camera there, maybe. Yeah. Just got a <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Awesome. So another strike there from Daryl. Yeah, Daryl was such just a nice, you know, finesse backup ball, which you don't see a lot with younger players nowadays. I think just the, the way scoring is and conditions, more people tend to throw straighter and harder, but, um, you know, many more people oh, in my era. Better. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Many more yeah. people in my era, especially, were with through more like Daryl does. Right. The role kind of. Smooth. Oh, Connor, I mean. corners or you know, the softer shot still carried the heavy hits. Right, right. Yeah, 
Oh my goodness. He nearly spare that. Holy. Yes. Yes, he did. And most of the time when he does do that, he, he's actually trying. <laughs> that's, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, better, that's something not... to get people fired up too, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Head yeah. spare. Yeah. So Rosa start off. Sorry. Well, I was going to say the Rosa starting off with four marks there. Yeah, and don't look away if you're watching the, the Traps Pandas play at Panorama because the pinfall's not over until it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so easy from Derek. Wow. Everything's looking good on your guys' end, yeah? Yep. We're Perfect. looking great. Oh, yeah. We're looking for Michelle to throw us another strike. Oh, except Derek's going to stand right in front yeah. of the camera. <laughs> As I <laughs> shuffle him over. <laughs> Getting a great promo in for auto value, but... Yeah, right. Yeah. Not a bad shot for Michelle. It was really strong. Someone who prides herself on her corner spare percentage, so... I think she throws a lot of those. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Need a little extra lane there for it. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Michelle, the commentator, would not be happy with Michelle the boy. No. <laughs> right. A little sheepish walk off there. <laughs> yeah. She's a little sad she's not commentating to the Oh, well, she has to bowl. She's just, right? you know, she gets the fun job. I get the easy job. <laughs> so, Larissa, tell us about David. He's had a little bit of a breakout season. Um, he has, yeah. The past you know, two seasons, actually, because so last year he won singles here and won yep. the zone roll-off, and then again back-to-back -back this year. And, yeah, he's just been playing hot. I think he's one of the top averages in his league on Thursday night. Um, so, yeah, he's just playing hot. He's looking forward to Grand Prairie this year to play singles again and yeah. Someone who doesn't show a lot of emotion. No, um, no. And is he, he... Yeah, tell us more about that. Yeah, he doesn't show a lot of emotion. emotion. Um, and then playing in Regina uh, last month, he made, I believe it was his first cut in Regina. Um, so that definitely got him pumped up. He was full of nerves, for sure. But <laughs> you, you couldn't see it, right? He's just... Ooh. He's so cool smooth roller and kind of goes with the flow. It's kind of awesome. Yeah. We always talk him about it, right? Totally. So interesting with this team, we have two teams who like a good chunk of those teams spend a lot of time at the bowling alley. You know, obviously Stacy is uh, the owner and proprietor of Toppler with Marcello being her son and Rich a family that's probably in that bowling alley every day of the week and same on the trash pandas you've got curtis and kara who own the bowling center now connor works yeah. there david works there yeah their uh, manager was the previous owner right so, yeah. yeah and yeah it can be the previous owner as well marcello what are you doing in the tub there yeah Oh, really smooth shot wow, what a push. Holy. And Derek last week, he played a tournament in Last Bridge, uh, the Bill Todd the... Memorial. Uh, uh, I think he finished four, fourth or third overall for the qualifying into Step Ladder. And then he got beat out in Step Ladder. Yeah. Who won really that tournament, Larissa? Weekend. I don't know. Might have been me. <laughs> Might have been you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's Michelle's. Never <laughs> Amazing. A little bit of a slow start for Rich. Just too much on the middle right now. Daryl says, this way, Rich, do it this way. Yep. 
But if you're going to get a couple of them, that's where you want them. Yes. Back to back, it's easier to adjust off them, plus they're not uh, in the middle of Mark's messing things David up. Touched or totally. He touched it, you said? It, like, he wiggled. touched it, yeah. Oh. That's much better. Uh, there you go, Christine. She's looking to kind of fix that ending that she had, you know? Yeah. She was throwing so well, and then just two not-so-great frames to finish that last game. That also shows her experience and poise, just not letting that affect her and coming right back strong this game. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, I feel like I kind of expected that one out of Curtis. He wasn't, you know, that, that last shot that he threw, he was on the right side of the head pin. That one, he looked like he pushed left, so it kind of came back funny, but I don't know. Odd pins down there in Medicine Hat. Yeah, we're, we're very bouncy over here. Solid. Are both Derek and Curtis. Wow. Two chop stars in a row. That's, uh, that's mighty fine. And it's always funny when you get the 12 counts is mentally it should be such an easy affair because it's one pin. <laughs> but I think yes. I can miss it. Because they almost, yeah. oh, I, I got a bonus. This is easy. And they're up there throwing the ball before they really set and, and thought about it. Yeah. Totally. That's a lot better for Marcello. Stable at the line. Great finish. Oh, oh. Oh. More. Oh. Yeah. 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 His arm really came across himself there. Rich goes, he's going to try a different order this time. He said, let's yeah. <laughs> avoid the middle in the first ball. Nice spare. Let's try and spare it this time. I think that's the most calm I've ever seen Connor come off the lane. That worked better for Rich there. I did, yeah. That's a veteran move. Plug, plug. Okay, I'm going to miss it this time. Yeah, intentional miss. <laughs> At least that's what he'd be telling his team. I did it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Derek's so tall, he doesn't even fit in our screen. Ooh. Wow, wow. Ooh. That was softly high. Daryl gets away with it for the corner. Yeah, I thought that one might have pushed. I, I thought there was a chance. You know, he's got lots of roll on that ball. Oh, he didn't like he, that. You know, just what uh, Steve said about the, the 12 counts. He was up there and he threw before he was ready. Ooh. Ooh, just catches it. So that gives Michelle a chance to kind of give herself a builder here. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. She knew. <laughs> both, both of her last two spares have been just enough. Yeah. <laughs> We're not hurting any pins today. Oh, there's yeah. Connor. Now I can hear him. <laughs> and Christine yeah. says, nah, you got to do better than that, David. Oh, good wow. frame from top here. Yeah, yeah those no, are some really excellent balls. Yeah, good answer from Derek. Well, game on. Yeah. Game on. I, yeah. Like, I, I, there's no one. We're not looking for pulls right now. We're no. We're just ready to watch some bowling. And that's exactly what, like, kind of we were saying from last game with the Roses, right? Like, they might have not had a, the game that they wanted, but coming into their second game, they're using that for motivation to just keep going. Totally. So I wonder how this plays for Marcello. You know, he's playing against Connor, who obviously Connor, you know, he's currently in Medicine Hat. He was in BC, um, but he grew up in Calgary, and I'm sure Marcello watched Connor growing up and, you know, probably wanted to play on youth challenge teams with him and right. four sex teams. And now he has to play against him. Uh, 
Do you have anyone like that, Steve or Brandon or Larissa? Anyone that you're like, gosh, I really wish I could play with them, but then you find yourself playing against them more than more often than not. Uh, Derek Orm, now that he's in Derek BC. Okay. Fair, fair. No, not really, because nobody really has left medicine hat. <laughs> yeah, I'm like everybody just stays here. <laughs> yeah. Steve, what about you? Anyone when you were playing that you were like, gosh, I wish I got to play with them? For me, it's kind of funny. Ian McLean's a couple years older, so we did interlap in YBC a bit. Um, yeah. And we did have a youth traveling league, so I kind of knew him a little bit. So then for him to move a little closer to here and then be in our zone and, and then become like almost best friends for a long time and get to play with him and now coach him and manage him. And if I if both of my new knees turn out to <laughs> turn out well, maybe I'll get to play with him again. But yeah, um, nice. yeah that's one instance, but it, it's, it's always cool. You know, and, and that's always an interesting thing with this game too, right? With um, some of the YBC tournaments or the way we do our youth challenge, you play against people all the time. And then eventually if you get on a national team with them, uh, you know, I guess yeah. it works out the same with like masters nationals and stuff for certain provinces now where you play against someone all year and you get to play with them. So it, it, it's always cool. Sure. Like masters, like, I mean, for me here, like, it's just wanting to go with other people outside of Minnesota, really. So like the Calgary people or Edmonton. Bowl. Yeah. I really love to bowl with some of them right on a team. Yeah. And that's the beauty of our, our master setup is we, we kind of get that opportunity here in Alberta. To, yeah. Oh, wow. There's another one. Plug to a chop. So this is kind of the scenario where I think both coaches are going geez, I wish I swapped Christine and Rich, or geez, I wish I swapped Derek yeah. and David. You, you can't do that. As a player, sometimes you kind of, you know, you'll say, I'll cover them, you cover my person, sort of thing. Exactly. Kinda, yeah. Mentally, yeah. mentally swap matches in your head. Mm -hmm. It keeps everything even for total, too, right? Yeah. So looks like we've got 457 over on the roses. Um, two doubles, a strike, and a spare. And I'm going to guess 360 or 380. 360. 360. And yeah. they're playing two doubles as a strike and a spare. They've got the St. Patrick's Day colors on the screen. Yeah. I don't know if that's intentional or not. <laughs> <laughs> Wowza, that was a roast on Connor. I thought that was such a good ball. He didn't look like he liked it, though. Oh, he must have felt it then. Going away. Sometimes yeah. you just know when you're going to get a corner. Yeah. Yeah, and you know out of your hand whether you whether you you know you ripped it really well and it's got good stuff on it, or if it's yeah. if you throw it flat, you're like, okay, give me something, something yeah. to work with. Yeah. Well, it's usually my chop offs. My corners, like I don't really know when they're coming, but my chop offs, I'm like, oh god, oh no. Uh, nice cover. Rich is kind of figuring himself out there. Found the rhythm. Oh, yeah. He really liked that. Wow. Locked in. Oh, there we go. That's a lot better from Daryl. So Michelle's really on the ball here. We'll see if we get something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was a lot better ball. Nice and aggressive. Yeah. Ball out on the lane. Just because her match is really close there, right? Yeah. You know, it's funny watching Michelle. I see a lot of Sue in her. That same okay. end over end rotation. Wow, Christine answers back. <laughs> David and Sue Yeah, we got some marks going now, folks. This is a game. Um, but yeah, with Michelle, like it's that same end over end rotation. It's not really got a huge angle or anything, and so those corners are always going to be that downfall. Wow, bombs! Going, like I'm going into commercial break now, right? So both. Teams... Yeah. <laughs> now you all have to sit there and wait. Yeah. <laughs> and wait. <laughs> 
I just want to point something out. Looks like we got ourselves a comment from uh, Barry's funeral parlor. Uh, oh yes, Connor's Better. alleged sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> there was a WCT event, WCBT event, where we had to, like a whole investigation into who that was. <laughs> That was uh, Red Deer two years ago, I believe. Yeah, yeah. he says that's his final day shirt. He only wears it on the final. So. All right, Larissa, do you want to give us a rundown of the totals there? You bet. So, Connor's at 103 with a spare. We got Derek with 135 and his double. Michelle, 77 with the strike. David, a 75 and a double there. And Curtis, 120 with a strike. And the total at the moment is five to 10. Awesome. And then we got the roses with 631 and their respective marks. We'll hop into commercial break and we'll be back in a second. Cargill is proud to be supporting a truly Canadian sport like five pin bowling. We look forward to watching some great competition from many competitors and bowling centers across our country. With hundreds of locations across Canada, Cargill is committed to helping the Canadian farmer thrive. Whether it is selling commodities, getting agronomic advice, fertilizer needs, crop protection and marketing expertise, Cargill is here to help. So please enjoy this bowling. Thank you. When you come to the Canadian Brew House, you'll feel right at home. We work hard to make our house your house. With an affordable menu of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and killer deals on daily specials. At our house, you never miss a play. As sports lovers, we've ensured each location includes over 50 TVs and our signature Jumbotron. The Canadian Brew House is the place people want to be. Guess who's back? The commentating team. It's us. We're back. <laughs> so other than Derek's blip, their uh, great, great fifth frame had into the break for both teams. Lots of momentum mm -hmm. going. Should be a great second half. I'm excited. I think we're going to see some bombs. Yeah. Players on both teams on uh, the front five, a.k.a. Yahtzee. Oh, yeah. I forgot about all that. Whoopsies. I'm not doing my arms. <laughs> Maybe a little fast from Connor there. Yeah. Yeah, to sit that long and then get up there and, you know, it's, it's none hard of them to go sat. the same routine. <laughs> They're all standards. And none of them, like, sit down. Yeah. Ooh, oh, that's, that's unusual. 
<laughs> Marcello, big chance here. And he yeah. converts it. There we go. A lot better. Yeah, I always find on the commercial break, it's best for me to actually like keep my energy up and stay moving a lot so that I mm -hmm. have to like slow myself down when we come back. Oh, he just opened his shoulders there. You could see it. And I think we're getting a pull. Yeah, looks like it. I'm going to say Parker. That's my guess. Yeah, I would put it. It would be mine too. Derek, for another one. Oh, no. No, more, more, more. Oh. Terrible. Possibly terrible here. I'm going to say, we've seen a lot of bouncies happen in here. Yeah, it's pretty bouncy. Pam, Pam is going in for Rich. Oh, okay. She's going to save Parker for those clutch shots when she needs them. Give Pam some time to work, work her magic. Maybe not that way. Eric hasn't had to go for anything but the middle. Yeah. So maybe two shots though. Maybe a little lazy there. Michelle, can she keep it rolling? Yeah, yes, oh. she can. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. Right, that was the three pin. It slid over. Yeah. Slid Way to over play with your emotion. Holy. <laughs> Nothing like being right at the lanes here. See all, all that action, right? <laughs> yes. Daryl covers his half nicely. David's found oh, the line nice. now. Oh, yeah. It's going to carry Derek's uh, little oops there. See Christine, keep it going here. Yeah, I'm interested. She looks like she's throwing a different pair of bowling balls right now, and I'm uh, okay. interested because I've only ever seen her throw like a gray <laughs> Paramount or uh, Scorpion or something like that. Wow, oh, good ball. There's her six pack. Yes, a six pack. Thank you. Sorry, I'm still not on that. <laughs> I guess David had a four bagger. Is there any four? No, it starts at Yahtzee, right? Uh, no, is that handball? Oh, yeah, handball. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll get Steve back in here. See if his iPad is refreshed. <laughs> no, first, just narrowly missing that corner. Yeah. Oh. Welcome back, Steve. Right. Oh, we still can't hear you. All right, so, you know, uh, Trash Band is keeping their two doubles going. Yeah. We're setting up two doubles. Connor's back. That's a lot better shot there. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to start back up. Keep it rolling. Yes. Yes. In total, you can... we got 706 here. Mm -hmm. 706 to 771. Nice, Marcello. Well done. Really taking advantage of that break that Connor gave him. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh. goodness. Yeah. That's, she's down. Yep. Wow, wow. I mean, it should have gone oh. down in the first place. Unfortunate head pin from camera coming in there. Yeah. Oh. Again, kind of just using her body to guide it in instead of her arm. Yeah. Just a funny little uh, middle miss there. There you go. Uh, would... oh, Steve, can we get you? I should be back now. You're back. Welcome back. Okay. A 10 count from Pam. 
You know, I think in that two hole. Whoa. David dropped a little. He heard. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stacy's looking to just kind of get some team total going in that two hole. So we'll see if oh, we get no. that double pull. That's oh, true. interesting. So now that hands that match back over to Michelle. Yeah. And David could cover. We're trying yeah, to it's important. Keep, it, keep it going with how Christine's rolling, right? Totally. Oh my goodness. Oh. That three pin came back and went into the other three pin. <laughs> Have we ever seen a messenger in five pin? <laughs> occasionally. Occasionally. Okay, yeah. I At mean, those big, big bouncy houses. Bowled, yeah. You bowled with Brad a fair bit, and I, I spent some time around John Cowan. So we, we That's some. true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's going to get it. Yeah. Nice. The push. What is that? 007, our shaken martini. Oh, okay. Nice. That is how you come back from losing a match. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Derek, maybe taking a moment, trying a different ball. A good, good frame seven, though, from Crash Panda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. That's what they needed after that uh, loss frame there. Do you think that's Derek just with his own game or a little veteran thing there, just trying to slow the pace down, knowing that the other team's on five marks? You know, it it could be both. Uh, Stacy did mention that they have the Calgary Carnage uh, playing, so there might be some energy or, or some hooting and hollering going on on the other side. And he knows how much this is important for them, right? So he could just be yeah. trying to... Uh, keep himself concentrated. Yeah. And again, you can <laughs> you can do all the psychological stuff you want, but uh, you, you've got to trust yourself that you can throw the shot. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, we're not sure what that was, but either way, Derek is just he's so good and then comes back with a bomb. Yeah. And the Carnage are, they, they're in a tight one right now. They're looking at 704 mm -hmm. to... Uh, Vancouver Island, 690. Both Strikes on both sides. What's that match at there? So Connor's at 138 with a double. Uh, at yeah. Marcello found that window and he said, I'm going to take it. That's, ooh, wow. Ooh, wow. rhythm. This and pen. Yeah, her arm was better that time, but I think she pulled herself out of it. Getting scared. Oh my god. Yeah, wow. Lots of pushing. Lots of pushing. <laughs> That's a better shot. Oh. Oh, unfortunate. Oh wow. That was a, a lot better thrown ball for sure. If anybody likes what they see at Panorama here, this is where the beef bowl is this year. Yes. Oh, little bonus count, but not what she wanted. And then she's up in her match. Mm -hmm. I don't know a pull here, possibly. If you're the roses, you just have to totally ignore that second match and just play yeah. together and uh, know that other other than that, you're in good shape. A hundred percent. Oh, you're, yeah, you're two and three there for sure on the roses. There. Yeah. You know, it's tough with Michelle because, like Steve was saying earlier, she's all over the middle, corner, corner, yeah. top, and she's up. So you kind of want to just let her sit there and hope that the next middle hit actually pushes. Yeah. Wow. It's going to pull. Okay. Yeah. Another one where you're like, that should have probably gone right off the bat. <laughs> All right, Christine, keep it going. Oh, 
archery and for Daryl. Yeah, so we'll see another swap out next frame. I think really just trying to steal that match yeah. for Toppler. Every point is so important Come here. On. Oh, oh no. Could see so gentle with that one. Yeah. Oh, great run from Christine. That's exactly sad. what she needed to do. She really helped out total for the team there. Yeah, yeah almost single-handedly for, for the first four frames anyway. Yeah. Or three frames. Big sticks for her here. Really trying to keep David on the run. Just run him out of frames at this point. Yeah, to get 300 with 390 left. Well done. Well done. But this does give the Trash Pandas a big advantage on total. You know, they have two doubles and two strikes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, Roses here are going to look to be at just two doubles, and that's it. And again, Derek being, it might just be him. Um, yeah. Very deliberate trying to, you know. Yeah, I think we are seeing, you know, an intentional slow down the pace. Yeah. Especially because they've just had, you know, in their last 10 frames, they've had five head, four head pins yeah. and an yeah, open. And, so. and we kind of came out in the last game too, right? We had, what, three mm -hmm. head pins in the 10th frame? Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to go back 20 or 30 years, but the, when I was playing on the bottom the other time, I would kind of... Ooh, wow. Any back to that, but I would kind of take my time and kind of the leadoff bowler, um, especially late in YBC, we had some team events and um, I played with a fellow Bob Lyon, loved playing first. That would kind of, if the other team was on a roll, I would kind of take my time and look at him and say, let's get a double and turn this around. 100%, 100%. So you got your tops and bottoms there working with Marcello and Derek. Now they're just trying to get the rest of the team back on back on track here. Oh, a little too thin. A little thin one on the right side. I think he typically likes to go for a left pocket. Top match now, Mar Marcello with 343 left. Connor would have to I'm way back up in town. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. We're getting enough. down to the nitty gritty here, folks. This is going to come down yeah. to total for sure. You know, on the other side, it's still a bit of a barn burner. We've got the pin slayers at 820 to the carnages 840 wow. uh, in the eighth frame. And there's a good shot from Parker coming off the bench there. This is what they needed to do last time, was load up the ninth frame and then execute the 10th frame. Exactly, yeah. From Derek. Oh. Wrap it. Pull it. Twist it. Bop it. Shout it. Yes, no. right? <laughs> Not today. Not on the left corner, just the right corner. It seems just that it was right. wrapping. Yeah. Yeah. Christine says it's easy when you miss. Exactly. Great. It's a given, right? Great bounce back. There's nothing like that one where you just turn around. And you go, oh, it was so easy that time. Yeah. Oh. A little bit of a. Whoops. 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 Wow. Derek was up there right away for that one, right? Yeah, He's no kind slow. Of feeding off the energy. Yeah. To keep it rolling. And that's how you play as a team. The momentum's going, you keep it going. Yeah, exactly. Michelle needs this one here. She's dropped it right there. Yeah, her timing is off there. She's, you know, at the line before her arm's coming through. That was a lot better. Oh. Ooh. So that gives that match right back to Parker. Mm -hmm. We'll see how the 10th frame shakes out for them. But Yeah, with that double she had, it looked like Michelle really had it going. And then... I just had that head pin on. Losing that momentum too. Yeah, just would have a nice seal a bit more energy on that spare. Mm -hmm. Big shot here. David can still get a three and a half. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, great ball, which would really put a dent in Christine's monster that she's got going. Right, and that's all you can ask. Sometimes um, I tell people that match points don't tell the whole story because totally someone can throw a, a big game to stay close to a monster will help you out more. Yeah. Absolutely. And someone who wins a match with a low game. Yeah. Well, we're going to see it here, right? Like in that three hole, that's not your best match ever, but someone's going to have to win it. Exactly. Just 54 pins in total separating. Both teams on two doubles. Roses with two extra strikes to count. Oh, no. Oh, no. That one. That's going to be a really tough finish for Connor. You know, Marcello's sitting there watching. He knows he's going to take this match. And now it's just all for total. So wow. that might have been one situation where I might have held off and see if I could get Marcello to go first. Yeah. Right. Knowing, so knowing you've got to throw a double anyway. So the funny thing, so Connor hasn't um, bowling lots of me like on WCBC, but he was talking about how in Regina it's a bit different format, right? It's match play, so yeah. he doesn't really do match play. Yeah. A whole bunch. So I'm wondering if that's kind of played into the factor here um, when you see him for pro league. Um, totally. A bit different mentality than playing your eight game sets, right? Yeah. After the Roses lost, oh, wow. great job by Marcello coming in, throwing a big game, giving them some energy. Yeah, yeah. huge. There you go. That's what they need for a team total there. But that's really all you can ask of a leadoff bowler in this position. You know, they know they've already won their match. Yeah. yeah. They know that they're up until you're like, just go throw us three, like give us as much as you can. Exactly. And sometimes that's so easy too when the pressure's taken off of you a little bit. It's just totally. like free rolling, right? So an excellent game, 343. Derek's going to try and get close to that here. Yeah. If Pam can get it. No. Oh, so I'll just it's a lot better with her arm. She's just still really popping up and out of that shot. Then I think for her ball, that just gives her kind of a, a flatter shot with less less yeah. forward end for end roll. Absolutely. I like that Connor and Derek throw like the opposite bowling ball, the soft roll sidewinder, but orange and blue and blue and orange. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it. Whoops, whoops, whoops. So struggle in that two hole, you know, Rich and Pam just couldn't really find that shot. But fortunately, they had Christine in four, who had all the shots. So the third match now with Parker going up. Michelle's got a max of 237. Mm -hmm. So Parker Parker throws a strike here. He's guaranteed himself pretty much a tie, at least. Yeah. Wow, wow. Ooh. Nice game. 337. That'll help balance out Marcello's for sure. Yeah. Like you said, Michelle's got a little bit of work to do here. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure she knows that she's against Parker. Oh, Ooh, that could have been a lot of things. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that Parker's one is going to... Needs to hit a pin. Oh, no, he's good. He's, he's good. good, yeah. Well done, Michelle. That's all you can do there. In a, ca a case there where, um, you know, Stacy brings Parker in thinking that he's probably got a better chance of throwing strikes the way Daryl was going there, right? 100%, yeah. Yeah. So that's you're not necessarily looking for someone to hit the thing, you're looking for someone to throw a strike. Oh, there we go. Well, that'll help Tony. Yeah, you know, a little 30 there, obviously still losing a little bit to Parker. Um, yeah. But it at least sets David up to have better energy here. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. He'll take that chop. That's a lot more points than a head pin. So we're a hundred points difference here on the last two bowlers. 
-hmm. One extra mark for pandas. Oh. So that is going to send that match probably into Christine's hand. Yeah. We'll see what she can do with this first one. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Wow. Oh, but Christine says, nope, yeah. not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, she, she shuts them out, but gave it, gave it a chance. Yeah, absolutely. Must be the energy in the building because the carnage are lighting up 9 and 10 here as well. So I think they can get to 1408, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't know. I don't think it will be. Christine's was just a little too much to cover. Oh, that's go. such a nice ball. Such a good game. You know, and such poise too. When you go out to a run like that and then miss once and then look up and like, holy crap, I still need to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you mean I'm not winning by 100? Yes. So I want some total yet. Um, that will do it. Uh, not quite yet. No, they can get one extra one there. Uh, well, it shouldn't count in, so that'll be 1450 something. Because Cubica is our uh, mm -hmm. okay, 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 okay. non mathing system, but Christine is gonna throw a beautiful 390. Excellent nice. game, Christine. That was just remarkable. Wow. Oh, yeah. So, 1453, so holy, can you imagine only taking, looking at maybe one point with a 14 and a half? So I, I think Derek still needs five with every ball here to. Well, how about he gets 15 with one? Yeah, not much yeah. for Dom. Wow. What a game. Wow, wow, wow. I called bombs, I called bombs. <laughs> I didn't expect this many, but holy. Yeah. Four, he's at 319. He's at 319 without touching anything here. So, yeah, 60. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. Wow. 1420. Or 1450, and you got one point. I mean, there's not yeah. much you can do other than to <laughs> add in. <laughs> yeah. I think they'll have some beef with the roses. Uh, three games over 322, and you don't win totals. Right? Yeah, I think that's kind of how their whole season's been, right? Is yeah. They've played huge, and I think they've had like a few like high 13s, 1400 total. Wow. Play a team with three games over 340. Exactly. Yeah. 1531. What an excellent wow. game. <laughs> well, let's uh, get our managers brought in here <laughs> and coming in. <laughs> Ken, oh, I'll let him get his earbuds in. <laughs> Ken, we're at a loss for words for you there, well, that, sir. That's about the third 1500 to throw at us, I think, or fourth. So nothing you do is a good game, guys. Wow. Um, you know, hats off to, to Trash Pandas. 1450 is an, an excellent game. And, you know, David really held himself in there. Uh, Curtis put everything out that he could. Um, Derek, excellent job. Just not enough. Nope. Yeah, as we said, three games over 322, and you only win one of them. That's crazy. We're waving the white flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stacy, that's probably what you envisioned your 10th frame going to, like, last game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? They they uh, we had two losses in a row, so I think they knew themselves trying to turn it around. You know, we have three games today, so like play like today, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, and they knew what they had to do to yeah stay in it, right? The numbers yeah. there, it's no secret. Um, excellent game. You know, a big shout out to Christine. 
the play yeah. and the control that it takes to lose a match because you open 9-10 and then come in and do what she did is is really impressive. Yeah, she wants a mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, okay, well, uh, Trash Pandas, you guys have two more games left this season. We will see you in a few weeks. Yep. Uh, Stacy, we're going to see you soon again. Yeah. You guys go and enjoy your your rest, and we'll be back in just a moment. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Good good. Luck, have a great day. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Where's our video here? Sorry, guys. I lost it. There. Cargill is proud to be supporting a truly Canadian sport like five pin bowling. We look forward to watching some great competition from many competitors and bowling centers across our country. With hundreds of locations across Canada, Cargill is committed to helping the Canadian farmer thrive. Whether it is selling commodities, getting agronomic advice, fertilizer needs, crop protection and marketing expertise, Cargill is here to help. So please enjoy this bowling. Thank you. When you come to the Canadian Brew House, you'll feel right at home. We work hard to make our house your house. With an affordable menu of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and killer deals on daily specials. At our house, you never miss a play. As sports lovers, we've ensured each location includes over 50 TVs and our signature Jumbotron. The Canadian Brew House is the place people want to be. What do you say after a game like that? Unreal, right? But this, that's the strength of the league. Um, yeah. yeah. Shoot 14 and a half with three, three games over 322 and come away with one point is... Ridiculous. The yeah. poor pandas, for sure, they've had the, the highest average against them this season. Yeah. Um, we'll have to thank Larissa. She uh, has to go to an open practice because it's that time of year in our sport. Uh, let's just quickly look at the standings. Yeah. Well, this sets up an interesting match now. Obviously, next gen, you guys are locked in at 66. The Roses now 50 and a half tied with the Venom, but playing the Rock and Rollers, who are one point back. Ooh. So the winner of this game probably gets second. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like. Um, I mean, the Mayhem, we've got two games left. Our max is 55, but that's taking all 16. So that's mm. um, that's a tall order. But, um, yeah, that uh, 
wreaks havoc with the standings for sure. And the Holy Roller still at 45, just sitting back, waiting to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Trash Panda is now at 29 with 16 left. So that puts them potential for 45. 45 is their max, yeah. Ooh, I wonder if we'll end up with a tie. That would be that would be the first, I think. Yeah, I I mean I hope it doesn't happen, but <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, on the the flip side of that, right? Depending with you guys, yeah. the snowmen could take all sixteen of theirs and and also be in there. Yeah, yeah. they've got forty five left as well for a max. So absolutely. So I I'm, I'm sure the venom are sitting there watching, hoping for an eight zero at least one way. Yeah, and then um, yeah, and then get out the abacus for next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring in our managers for our final match of the day. Rock and Rollers versus Toppler Roses. Oh, I should get that off the screen, shouldn't I? Whoa, whoa, there we go. Okay, I, I was almost 100% today. <laughs> so Shane, Stacey, everybody, you're... everybody in your team alive and moving today? Um, no, <laughs> no, but... Uh, but... A few of us are here, so that's all yeah. that matters. Yeah, I know the, the party was still going on out there until 2 o'clock in the morning after the Open. Um, oh. Obviously, you guys had an amazing Wednesday through Friday at the Open. Um, we'll fill people in on yesterday. But um, any any hangover, either hangover or just, um, you know, any energy left for today for you guys? See, all those young guys might have hangovers, but uh, us <laughs> veterans, we're, uh, we're, we're used to managing that. So we'll, uh, well we'll, well we'll, we'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Stacy, you're back for the third time today. Um, what can we say? You went from kind of the the poops to the, yeah. the wows, and what do you do now? Well, they do that. I mean, Steve knows he's played with us and, and, and against us when we went from the, you know, the, the cloud nine to the shit house, let's say. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they just, you know, I mean, I think now we're finally on our third game, our final game of the season. It's nice to, to get this far and see the finish line. Right. So yeah. yeah. Speaking of strikes. both of, you know, the numbers, what's your approach, Shane, we'll start with you. What's your lineup? Um, our lineup's going to be Brandon Tibbs leading off, uh, Katie Wells second, Mitchell Williams, Courtney Lucas, and then Brandon Smith. Um, I'm on the bench today, and Brad Glenn's not available today. So we're, we're a six-man team today. Um, and, I mean, the strategy really is, I think Steve kind of summed it up. It's, I think, the winner of this game um, gets locked into the 2-3 seed of one, one or the other, and uh, the loser probably has to wait for a couple other games to to finish so it's an important game absolutely stacy one more time with your lineup uh we'll go this game marcello jennifer parker christine derek rich and daryl will be on the bench and pamela will be subbed out this game all right you guys go finish your warm-ups we're gonna run through the rosters and we'll get you going all right good luck, good luck guys. Shane. Good see guys. ya oh all right, Steve, why don't you start us off with the Rock and Rollers? Yeah, the Rock and Rollers. Shane Chafe, Brandon Tibbs, Brad Glenn, um, Newfoundland and Labrador singles champion for this year, Brandon Smith, Mitchell Williams, Courtney Lucas, and Katie Wells, and manager, player manager Shane Chafe, and they're in Plaza Bowl in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. Lovely. And Brandon? We got Parker Anderson, Rich Weber, Jennifer Smith, Derek Holm, Pamela Wilson, Marcello, Daryl Wood, Christine Poxa, manager Stacy Weber, bowling out of Toppler. Lovely. That's that. And let's hop into it. Oh, we got the neon. Wow. They're just trying to throw us into, you know, eye fatigue and some seizures over here. Probably not with the ones that uh, were still partying at 2 a.m. last night want to see. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. So um, I think this is actually new since it's probably their last match, but Rock and Rollers have the new Steltronic system. Yeah, they, they use it for, I know they had it. They just got it when they played us, and there were a few mm. kicks with it. But 
I'm gotcha. sure after, after having hosting the open for from Wednesday onward, they should be good, running well now. Hopefully it looks like we may actually have to add in their totals. I'm not sure, Brandon, if you are able to have the running total at the bottom. Uh, it should be. Uh, they had it. Uh, I want to say they had it last time. The weekend. It, it has to be in Steltronic. It has to be set up oh. as like a team. Gotcha. Um, and I think because they're on open play, they didn't do that. OK, so we'll see. We'll see how she goes. But um, yeah, and then looks like, you know, they're going to a slight, slight change to the roses, which I think is pretty fair based on how that last game went. Um, but not surprised that one, four and five are going to stay exactly where they are. Yeah, I kind of expected them to almost start the way they finished other than you know pamela struggled a little bit at the end there so yeah so again um the rock and rollers um a lot of them as we mentioned played they're open this week um in the singles on wednesday katie katie wells was actually the top seed mm -hmm. Um, and Courtney qualified fifth. Courtney lost her match, her first match, and then Michelle Penny beat Megan Galcano in a big, in an exciting game, like three forty six to two ninety nine. And then yeah, she, Nicole uh, was lights out in the step. Sorry, Nicole Pretty went on to uh, yeah to beat Katie twice in close games to win the title and. Um, yeah, Brad Glenn's not there today. He qualified six for single, so just missed the step ladder because Jeff Young had 15 and a half his last four. Wow. Um, and then Jeff Young beat Shane Chafe 314, 311 in a game. And then Jeff Young beat his teammate Ray Dumphy in a or sorry. Um, in a in a close match, he beat Brandon Tibbs, who we see here. Brandon had over 2,800 next step ladder and then lost, I think, 290 to 279 for Jeff. And then um, Brandon Smith um, beat Jeff in the final. And Brandon had over over 3,000 for his 10 games and then 270-something um, in the final. So he averaged over 300 for the 11 games total. Wow. So that's impressive. Yeah. And then um, Shane... Shane and Brad and Brandon were on the team from uh, Metro Holiday. One. It is yeah. that um, they went 14 and one in the round robin. So the team they played in the step ladder had to beat them twice and shot fifth, the big 15 against them the first game and then knocked them off the second game too. So I know yesterday was kind of disappointing, but uh, they threw up huge numbers all week. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Marcello kind of just trying to refine his footing after that big finish. And Jen being in a, oh, sorry, go ahead, Steve. No, I was just going to say and they had a huge game, but it was also a hard fought game where they couldn't let up. So, you exactly. Know, they, they're veterans. It's going to be hard the third game of the day. They want to really avoid a letdown here because they're playing a team that uh, is coming in with, with a lot to prove, right? It's a huge game for the standings. Yeah. Absolutely. Christine says, what do you mean? It's the same game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. Oh, I get to test my mental math skills today. That's going to be fun. <laughs> we are not opposed to using calculators if need be. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I have to use my phone for uh, right. this right, right. now, so... Derek, too. He's going to keep rolling. Nicely done by Courtney. And I mean, no surprise to see Brandon playing anchor there after a weekend just like that at that center. Yeah. You know, you know, he's probably got it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and with Brad unavailable, Brandon played four and Brad played five all weekend. 
which is usually what they do on, on, on this game too. But um, I'm sure Shane won't mind me saying that um, Rock Rollers got off to a slow start this year. And then I think they had three games in one day and Brad wasn't available and they won all three without him. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, not the shot they were looking for there, but... Uh... It's early, it's early, so you know, lots of game to play. You know, it's what time is it here? Twelve. We're pushing four o'clock out in uh, Newfoundland, yeah. so these guys are probably pretty tired themselves. Like they said, big weekend and then right back at it. The people who might have a benefit here are, are going to be Courtney and Katie. Yeah, they may have been at the banquet last night, but they actually, with their women's format, didn't have to play all weekend. They only played singles. Yeah, and they're already going to national on the ladies' team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can see from there, Katie looks nice and loose. Throwing some bombs. Mitchell here was playing on the, uh, the mixed team from Plaza Bowl. And I know they made the step ladder, but it didn't really go their way. No, and I think he, he averaged close to 250 all weekend, I think. Yeah. So, you know, he's a, he's a very good player. Of course, he's got Masters National experience and. Yeah, so much drive for the game. You can see yeah. it with every ball he throws. Sorry, that was a uh, head pin three five in the first frame for rock and rollers, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if there's a refresh maybe at the halfway point or there's really zoomed in again. Courtney. Ooh. I think it's honestly the glare from the lighting. Mm, yeah, fair. And, uh, and I found it watching the live streaming on the weekend. I would have to take a screenshot and blow it up to be able to see the. Oh, yeah. The, the, just the glow from the numbers. They, they make it, uh, again, could be my 55-year-old eyes too. <laughs> it's nice when you're in person because it's super clear, but on yeah. the camera, it doesn't translate so well. She's so covering her half there. Yeah. No, so for this uh, this format, sometimes the very simple systems with a lot of the, without a lot of uh... <laughs> yeah, not too much jazz going on is is the best. Wow, Christine, do you throw anything else that looks boring? Yeah, I think your last. Uh, I want to say probably 28 shots, 24 or 25 have been that. Or maybe not quite that much, but... <laughs> it's certainly close. Seems like it. So Christine was averaging 264 before today. She's been well over that each game here. So we'll see a, a big jump in her her average. Could see her in the hunt for MVP this year. Yeah. Yep, yeah, certainly. So the rock and rollers have been like super solid all year. Katie 278, Shane 266, Brandon Smith 250, Brandon Tibbs 302 for his five games. And again, how tough is it in this league? 302 for, for five games, and he's only won three of those. Right. Uh, Mitchell 247, Courtney 245, and Brad, who's not there, 285. Yeah. Wow, such a strong team. Another one for her? Oh, no. Ooh. Not what you want to see after a double, but at least it's a solid count. Oh. Let's <laughs> try for it. Yeah, kind of kind of double dipped and, and headed over there. Jen, just too much on the middle right now. A nice cleanup. Well done.
See Mitchell trying to stay nice and loose on the lane there and kind of shaking it out. Yeah. Well, it looks like on the other side that Sherwood Park has also gone into global mode and we've got the Bombers uh, playing a match out there against the Avalanche. Oh, big push. Lots of roll on that one for Parker. Courtney looking to find the middle here. Just like that. Love her follow through. So aggressive. I know sometimes, obviously, you don't really want to miss, but sometimes starting miss bear, miss bear isn't a bad way to start the game because you, you've got a feel for what you're doing on your first ball and you're yeah. coming back a good second ball every time. So mentally, yeah. you can make that adjustment and run with it. Absolutely. We finally see something different from Christine. She kind of gets, it was a little thick, but we've seen a lot of thick ones go for her today. And right on the nose with the spare, well done. So Avalanche on the other side started six marks in a row. And they are now running four head pins in a row as a team. Oh. That's one way to bring a halt to your uh, your big start. Yeah. yeah. And congratulations to Will Thompson, who threw his second perfect game this week. Yeah. And he uh, just turned 21. That's crazy. So crazy. Yeah. As, as, as someone who uh, doesn't have one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's make that five head pins in a row for Avalanche. Derek wants to join their team. He says, I fit right in. That's All right, fun. a little bit of a rough frame. Yeah. I was going to say you talk with them with five head pins in a row. That's tough because you don't want to, you, you never want to miss, but. Right. But the tendency after the first couple is, okay, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Marcello just getting a little fast on that one there. Oh. So both top guys with slow starts. Yeah, not. Not the energy we've seen uh, like we did last time. That's for certain. Yeah. Oh, that was a better ball from Jen. Yeah, just a little it? high. Um, yeah, she kind of just pushed that head pin straight back instead of up yeah. to the side. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't expect that with her speed necessarily. No, no, it's a bit odd. Oh, and then oh yay yay. It's a frustrating, frustrating frame when you've thrown two, two very good shots and have nothing to show for it. Yeah. So to her benefit, Katie has decided to slow down a little bit as well. I found a solution to the issue. I've got an old phone with the uh, 510 app pulled up. Oh, look at that. Amazing. It's going to make all of our lives a lot easier. <laughs> so Dwayne... Dwayne broke their string of head pins with a strike, and then Colton, actually, I don't think it was Colton on the lane. No, Kevin Boyko got put in and came back with another head pin. Damn it, Boyko. Uh, assuming that I'm reading this correctly, Avalanche has also used both of their poles by the fourth frame. Oh boy. I like it. Yeah, they're playing an aggressive game today. Yeah, depending on the situation, you have to sometimes. Yeah. So Parker is going to give uh, Mitchell a chance to jump ahead here. Yeah, he missed on the first ball. I think they're just waiting for the head to be. I think that's what happened. Oh, and he gets it. Big shot for Mitchell. Yeah, he liked that. It was full, but he, you could tell he knew he threw it well. 
Yeah, lots of finger, lots of aggressions. We'll see if Courtney can keep that trend going. Those bottom three are really helping out the team there for the Rockers. Yes, great ball. I'm loving this just nice, steady energy. You can see Shane up at the front there, kind of keeping him going. Oh, I thought that was good. I thought that was good. Does he usually fall out of a shot like that? Because it looked like he was pretty yeah. off balance. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's the standard for him. That's how he averaged 300. <laughs> yeah, that's that not cool. Oh, Christine. Oh, she gets away with that one. You're looking at that going, oh, it's a head pin. Oh, it's aces. Okay, I'll take my corner. So slight advantage to the rock and rollers right now. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, with the roses, they did just come off a of monster where they had to shoot a monster. So kind of got to let that uh, adrenaline settle. I think we'll see a big change after the commercial break with them. Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. Yeah. You know, and as we as we discussed too, I think there's a difference between throwing a monster when you're up by 300 and it's a free wheel of monster, as opposed to, uh, you know, we're we're all rolling really well, but we can't throw one bad shot here. A hundred percent, yeah. Much more mentally draining. Yeah. Close match up top. Both guys looking to get it going. Marcello's going to try right now. It's two marks in a row for him. And actually, uh, Brandon starts a little further left, but kind of similar shots where they kind of throw pretty hard backups with their arm kind of coming out to the side and cupping it underneath. Yeah, yeah. You can see that um, the hand underneath and on the inside of the ball when they release it. Oh, that was, wow, that was a gen ball right there. Great shot. Great High event. and heavy, but a wrapped on a roll. Are you guys able to read the total okay? Where it is? Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Honestly, anywhere anywhere you had it is, is good for us. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's the roses we saw last game. Katie answers back to, you know, found that better shot that time. Yeah, both teams looking to roll heading into the break. Yeah, beautiful ball. Side, wow. Great shot for Mitch. This is the time of year where you want to be watching these, though, right? Like, all of these players have been playing all season long. They're back in their grooves. They've recovered from the summer off, and they're getting ready for their open provincials, their final master set. So they're they're dialed in right now. Oh, yeah. Early in the season, sometimes the physical game's there, but you're kind of not in. You know, you haven't thrown all those shots mentally, yeah. in your mind. Whereas yeah. now, you know, mid season, everybody's or to the end of the season, everybody's in game mode for sure. A hundred percent. So Courtney, a little blip there. So the roses loading up 528 with a double and four other strikes to count. A uh, great shot from from Smitty there. Yeah, so 50 back and just minus the double. So lots of marks for them to count as well. Lots of marks. All right, we'll jump into our last commercial break and be back with the rest of the stream.
Cargill is proud to be supporting a truly Canadian sport like five-pin bowling. We look forward to watching some great competition from many competitors and bowling centres across our country. With hundreds of locations across Canada, Cargill is committed to helping the Canadian farmer thrive. Whether it is selling commodities, getting agronomic advice, fertilizer needs, crop protection, and marketing expertise, Cargill is here to help. So please enjoy this bowling. Thank you. When you come to the Canadian Brew House, you'll feel right at home. We work hard to make our house your house. With an affordable menu of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and killer deals on daily specials. At our house, you never miss a play. As sports lovers, we've ensured each location includes over 50 TVs and our signature Jumbotron. The Canadian Brew House is the place people want to be. Our last big push to the end of the stream here. Yeah, end of the home stretch and right on schedule too. So good job, yeah. you guys. We try our best. <laughs> yeah. And the home stretch for both these teams. Last game for each of them. Last five frames to clinch that second spot. Yeah. Big shot here for our leadoff bowlers. Cello. Huge. Up by nine on Brandon, both on strikes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not what we wanted to see after the break. So I'd be looking, especially at Brandon right now, you know, in this do or die situation, you're down by nine. Oh, I guess you got a little gift there, but he's only marked every other frame. You got to get something rolling here. Yeah, yeah. Their only other trouble is you got Courtney in four playing Christine, who's just on a heater. Right. Yeah, it's a it's a tough call, and like, and you're not going to hesitate when the person to bring in is Shane. No. Who can obviously throw strikes and and bunches and yeah. quickly. <laughs> but Shane's going to hesitate because he's the one that has to make that call. You know, he's a, a humble guy and. Yeah. He has lots of trust in his teammates. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's another, you know, another dynamic we've talked about. I think we've talked about it in previous games when someone's been a player manager, whether they've hesitated a bit because it is themselves that they would be bringing in. Yeah. Jen covers her half. She's just got to focus on putting those marks together to stay with, uh, yeah. with Katie. On the other stream, we've got the bombers firing. They've got a 685 in the first two bowlers in the sixth frame. Solid, solid starts for them. Parker, that's a great ball. And Mitch says mine, mine too. Rolls the dice for Yahtzee. Yahtzee. <laughs> Parker's got to be thinking, even when I go in the third hole. <laughs> yeah. People pick on me. How dare they? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a great ball from Courtney. Excellent. And on the toppler side, I mean, this is a tough match too. There's no obvious pull for them right now. Ever oh. Yikes. I kind of lost for words after that. <laughs> yeah. Shane's going to go in for Tibbs. All right. Smitty's just, he's firing down there. Yeah, his ball is just so strong, right? Just yeah. a bit, bit of a backup, but just heavy, heavy roll. And he always seems to have such a large pocket to play. Like both sides of the head pin are in play, it seems. A hundred percent. 
you know, in the last 18 frames. I think that's the first mistake we've seen Christine make. Yeah, because it's like all day, well, minus maybe the first couple of frames of the first game, her she's had a couple of punches, but everything else up until now has been pretty much a strike. Right. Whoa. That was real fast from Derek. Yeah, that didn't look good from the outset. No, just a uh, real good shit in the tub. <laughs> Keep forgetting that. Sign of old age, I guess. I can remember things from 40 years ago that are in the world. <laughs> but all the fresh stuff just doesn't stick yet. That's just a bowler thing. <laughs> all right. So definitely a better commercial break comeback for rock and rollers. Yeah. Uh, Toppler is going to look to right the ship coming into the last four frames here. 44 in totals, but two extra doubles to count. Yeah. And again, Rock and Rollers coming into this game one point behind the Roses. Both teams looking to, to sneak into second place and hopefully uh, stay there. Yeah. Both teams have been a staple in the playoff hunt uh, all three seasons now. Yeah. It's not surprising with their rosters, you know, just... Absolute leaders of the game Ooh, across the country. Yeah, absolutely. So Jen's much. was real close. Katie's was not so close there. <laughs> yeah. Push. Oh, she gets it to go. That's big. Yeah, both, both ladies get their half. We'll see if Mitch can keep his run going here. And again, a strike here. Give Parker 143 on a double, which is a huge game. Huge, but just behind the pace yeah. right now. Yeah. Boom. That was a we great saw, shot. Yep. Yeah. We saw it last game with Christine when she had to keep throwing because um, David was running on with her. David was right on her tail. Mitchell's kind of in the same boat here. And, you know, Christine's in the exact same spot again, too. She's 168 and 6, and she's not so... That'll put a stop to the run. Yeah. Um, so that, that makes that game real interesting now. And like we're saying with Christine, like she's 168 and 6, and she's only 30-ish ahead, yeah. if that. Nicely done. Yeah, it's Courtney's 120 on a strike. Yeah. That's uh, a, a really good rebound from the Roses there, you know. Yeah. Signs of professionals able to keep it controlled and not panic after that kind of shaky restart. Well, and you, you've, got, you've got so much veteran leadership on there too, right? It's hard not to, it's hard not to just follow along Hundred percent. So big sticks for Mitchell. Two eighteen and seven. I think so. Yeah. And Parker with another strike here potentially takes a lead. Yeah. Oh, that was a really nice shot there. And Courtney just kind of behind the two pin unexpectedly. So she picks it up down 18. Christine on a strike, of course. Yeah. Another big shot here for Brandon working on his double.
another one. Oh, I think he just laid that one down a tad bit there. We're on our other stream in the Cargill side. The Bombers are pacing to take seven or eight or six off of Avalanche. It's There's lots of tight matches over there. But Bombers have about a 200 pin lead uh, in total. That'll be a project for later on today or tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big streams on both sides today. Eight matches total in the league. Oh, this is really a game of we're seeing similar mistakes on both sides. No. It's a chance for Shane. Oh, no. Doesn't get the roll. Not quite enough. Does bring him within striking distance coming into 9 and 10, though. Yeah, big stick here to get it within 15. Yeah. I'd like to see Jen slow down just a little bit. She looks really antsy to get on the lane right now. Don't know if that's how she plays the game, but I feel like she's just she's rushing to get there. Doesn't break it up. No, and Katie gets the kick back yeah. off the ball. Nicely done. That shot for Jen looked, uh, from my standpoint, looked good out of her hand. Just one of those that ended up in a bad spot. Like yeah. She... Absolutely. You, know, you hate Katie... to pull. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Steve. No, I was just going to say that. It's Katie to 194 working on a strike. So You hate to pull a veteran like Jen, but this, you know, the situation... All the points considered, playoff positions, this might be the time you have to do it. Well, and you've got um, well, Rich and Daryl on the bench, right? And you have that freedom because you're not you're not touching Christine. So Exactly. Exactly. But so much <laughs> so much goes into these situations, right? We're talking about that, but she's also had three marks going into that frame. Yeah. Yeah. So both leaving right corners there. That's going to put Parker just a titch behind. Potentially two sticks. Two sticks behind. Yeah. Assuming they both make the spare here. Parker got his. Oh, and the lights are back on in Plaza. And Mitch has his. Yeah, didn't two. let him. Come. Nope. Courtney's up and ready to go. Christine's total trying to still, keep building. Total still very close. Oh. She looked like she was running it out. Maybe it just. I, yeah, I think she was Maybe. expecting that to stay on the line. Yeah. That gets Courtney to 180 on a strike. Mm. Big frame for the rollers. Yep, absolutely. Fourth match very close now, 180 on a strike against 218. Yep. 208, right? 208. 208, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Bad eyes. Um, yeah, Roses are certainly going to be looking to duplicate what they did last game with that 9th and 10th frame. Excellent ball from Derek. Hopefully that starts them off on something here.
Bombers starting to run away with their team total a little bit here. I know they are uh, in a contentious spot for playoffs as well as defending champs trying to essentially block the Dream Crushers from getting in. Ooh, Shane thought he had that one for sure. To stay within 13, yep. It's like Both toying with us here. Home. <laughs> here, you have it. No, you have it. Okay, well, I'll keep it. No, I want it back, actually. Hold on. So Katie freewheeling for totals with 194 and a strike. Jennifer yeah. looking to fight back and grab some totals. Team's down about 30 right now, the Roses are. Yeah, she laid that one down again, really getting Katie get away from her here. Third match, really, half. Yeah, third match, really intriguing. 218 on a half for Mitchell, 216 on a half for Parker. And Parker broke up ahead of him. Mitchell's pretty deliberate. Yeah. Nice ball. As close to a no doubter as you can have. Yeah. Oh no. Oh wow. Wow wow wow. Not the center I expected to see. Oh sorry, yeah, you're right, Brandon. That was a really lucky push. Saves him a lot going into ten here. Great bounce back. Yeah. For Christine. That's exactly what we expected out of a toppler. That ninth frame super solid. Yeah, that one never looked smooth. That was almost like his shot in six, where just got ahead of himself, never had a chance to finish it, I don't think. Yeah, that is going to be a big error um, on Mitchell's side. Essentially gives Parker an entire ball on, on top of him. In the 10th frame... But now here we see uh, Smitty will have a chance to jump on Derek in that last frame. Yeah. Well, even a half will give him the lead by potentially 10 too. Yeah. Nice, Courtney. Well done. Yep. Oh. Aaron Arndt just got roasted for a 398. Oh. Oh, a little fast, I think. Again, just laying the ball down when he, he's speedy there because that timing. So needs a half to get to 202 in eight. Oh, no. The hat stays on. Thought we might see it. <laughs> watch it. Watching the open all weekend from their live feeds, I almost didn't recognize him without the hat. But right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so slight advantage, uh, pin wise, to the rock and rollers, but one extra mark there for the roses as we come into ten. And the Bombers are going to be pushing for 1,600 over in Cargill. Wow, uh, great ball. Great shot. That keeps him. Shane's, Shane's got a strike to stay within 13 again. And he gets it. That's a, a big ball with a lot of power behind it. It hits the middle. It's dangerous. Yeah. 
Yeah, you don't want to get run over by him or the ball. <laughs> oh, big. Yeah, huge shot. Shane says you got to do better than that. You got to throw another one. Show me how bad you want it, Marcello. Oh, he's opened the door. He's got the match locked up. Did he? Yeah, it was just 140, so 170. Oh, so. yes. Yeah. yeah, my apologies. Jen looking to push one. Doesn't get it. Oh, and Katie right through the face. Right through the face. Still's going to get the point, though. Jen's going to look to add to total at the bottom here. Okay, you're looking to clean up for 269. Two strikes left to count and a double to count for the Rock and Rollers. Not what we expected from Jen, but, you know, did what she could that game. Threw some, threw some decent shots, just couldn't, uh, couldn't string enough to score well. Yeah, it never really went in, your, in her favor there. Oh. Hmm. 286 match for him. Mitchell would need a double. Mitchell's got 255 in nine. Barring a kickback. So he loses yeah. some key pins there. Because now Mitchell doesn't need the double. Those are huge sticks. That's one. Yeah. Parker gotten 15. He, Mitchell would have needed. Oh. Still so, good game. 277 for Parker. Yeah. Totals now 35 for the Rock and Rollers with an extra double to count, plus, or with the double against one strike to count, plus Mitchell's last two balls to count. Yeah. So as we stand, Top of Roses are 51 and a half, and Rock and Rollers are 50 and a half. Is that right? Oh, Christine. I believe so. Okay, remember what. Uh... Yeah. Are we sitting here? Yeah. So roses have officially passed the venom. Yeah. It's likely that the the rock and rollers are going to pass them as well here. Yeah. What do you think? We're going to see a four four split. Well, Mitch Mitchell needs needs a three pin here. It's a three pin. Ooh. Yeah. We've got 275 with the ball left. Parker at 277. Again, the pinning came. Uh, important. Very important. We've seen several matches today, like close matches where a few sticks either way. Mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, Christine really opened the door for Courtney there down in the four hole. Yeah, because now she can free wheel on that double. We'll see if Derek. Waits. He's up 19 in his match, but they're down. A I think he will. Yeah. yeah. Smart shot. That's just enough. Just enough. That's almost exactly where you would have instructed him to throw it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So 180 on a double for Courtney. Mm, big count. Yeah. 
show link. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's lots for the match. I think we're just coming down to this last match now. Brandon's 203 and 9. Derek's 222. And we had a, a 7 1 for the Bombers over in the other division. They had a 16 33 low game of a 275. Oh. And so total is also going to go to the rollers here as they can only reach 1190 yeah. on the Rose side. Brandon's got 248 max. He misses there, so 233. So the last match will go to Derek. Yeah. So 6-2 so for the split. Roller. Just going to send the, uh, the rollers into that number two seed. And roses are going to sit in the three seed for now. They should be fairly solid, pending, obviously, um, the mayhem. Yeah, we can get to, sorry, the Mayhem can get to 55 if they run the table. But, yeah, uh, yeah the Venom at 50 and a half. They're fourth right now. Mm -hmm. um, Snowman, Snowman can only go to 45. The Trash Pandas can go to 45 as well. So, yeah. Yeah, the Mayhem are at 39 with two games to go. We'll just wait for our uh, managers yeah. to hop back in here. I'm sure they're taking a moment to be with their team. Yeah. yeah. And the Holy Rollers are Holy Rollers are booked. They're down for the year at 45. And the Trash Pandas and Snowman would have to go 16 next week in their two games to get to 45. Welcome back, managers. Congratulations, Shane and the Rock and Rollers. You guys locked up the two seed. How was that for you? No, it was great. I mean, we came in shorthanded, and it was a really tight game, so uh, our scoreboard didn't help help the cause. I know uh, the new scoring system here, we're still trying to uh, master how to how to get those scores on the screen. So, uh, no, it was a big win for us. Uh, the team came through. I know uh, myself and Brandon kind of struggled up top, but uh, two, three, and four pulled it out, so... We'll take it. Sure. And Shane, are you going to mention that I believe you're four and zero without Brad now? He knows. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's making playoff roster decisions really easy, Steve. It is great. <laughs> uh, love it. Too funny. So, Stacy, obviously not the finish you guys wanted. Your second game, tenth frame, was ideal. First and third game. <laughs> Maybe not what you'd drawn up on the board, um, but you are, you are in the three seed, and we were just discussing yeah, how Mayhem yeah. will have to take pretty much everything um, to catch you guys. How are you feeling? What are you thinking? Well, a tough match. I we, we had a lot of head pins that game. A lot of you know uh, stoppers for sure, right? So. You do what you can and, and hope. I mean, um, it was really hard to see the score. So we didn't know we were, we were constantly kind of adding up and we weren't sure. Like we didn't know Marcello won his match until you guys put a one on the board, right? So yeah, uh, it, it's a little bit frustrating in that sense because you can't see anything. Uh, so you kind of just guess. But I mean, you still got to hit the middle. You still want to throw strikes and, you know, plows happen, happens to everybody. And, you know, we had a 1500 today. <laughs> so we'll go with that. <laughs> Well, well, too, and as we mentioned, it was a fifteen. It was a big fifteen hundred, but it was a close game the whole way. So it was like there's fifteen yeah. hundreds where you're just free willing because you're up by three hundred. And there's fifteen hundreds where you need every single shot, right? So yeah. that was yeah, that was going to be naturally be hard to bounce back from just from the mental, you know, the mental strain there. But um, yeah, no hard fought match. I mean, great seasons for both of you guys. Um, it's it's such a tough league so to be to be sitting you know two and three right now and um i know we would need a huge a huge week next week to to sneak to sneak in there ahead of anybody but yeah it's a great league right i mean there's no gimmies in any league of any game of this caliber so you know you've got to be on the game all the time and and even if those newfies are hung over and party till 4 a.m 
<laughs> Still got it, Shane. It's their sweet we're, spot. We're used to this. This is what we do. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, congratulations, Rock and Rollers, and a congratulations to the Roses. Both great regular seasons. We're going to see you both in the playoffs. So get some rest, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Yep. All great right. season, Thanks, guys. guys. See you later. Take care. All righty. Well done, team. Well, uh, any parting words? Good job, Mel. That was enjoyable. Again, um, next week will be exciting for a few teams anyway. <laughs> um <laughs> And that last game we saw could be a could be a precursor to the two versus three playoff game. So, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Brandon, thanks for all your hard work today. I know that was a lot going on. Not a problem. Yeah. All righty. You know Let's what? At least the... the tech issues were on the side and not on the street. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. We'll play this last commercial and we'll get out of here. Hey, girl. Yeah. Take care, guys. Cargill is proud to be supporting a truly Canadian sport like five-pin bowling. We look forward to watching some great competition from many competitors and bowling centres across our country. With hundreds of locations across Canada, Cargill is committed to helping the Canadian farmer thrive. Whether it is selling commodities, getting agronomic advice, fertiliser needs, crop protection and marketing expertise, Cargill is here to help. So please enjoy this bowling. Thank you. When you come to the Canadian Brew House, you'll feel right at home. We work hard to make our house your house. With an affordable menu of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, and killer deals on daily specials. At our house, you never miss a play. As sports lovers, we've ensured each location includes over 50 TVs and our signature Jumbotron. The Canadian Brew House is the place people want to be.